good, Abby. You got it. <coughs> so now we can start. The call in number is working, right? Yeah, that's on. This is we're trying to share it on Facebook so everyone could see it if they want to watch that way. No, I'll but it's a good start. Is it live on Facebook? It is? Okay. Welcome to our Kingsburg City Council regular meeting. Before we get started, we would like to invite Pastor Tim Boynton to come up to do the invocation, and we will follow that by our flag salute. Welcome, Pastor Tim. Yes, thank you. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, you created everything, the sun and moon, the stars that are scattered throughout the universe. You created the earth, filling it with beauty and wonder and teeming with life. But it was humanity that was in your heart when you fashioned it all. It was your desire to make human beings in your image, to love them as your children. And that's why we invite you uh, here today knowing that you invite us to call you not only Father, but to come to you as children to a loving Father. You are good, and you are out for our good. It's on that basis that I come before you this evening on behalf of this town, our town, our city council, and these friends who are gathered here tonight. We need your loving presence in our midst to lead us and your spirit of peace to fill us with a peace on the inside that we can share with one another, even as important things are discussed with conviction and emotion. We have seen how easily people can be divided and think the worst of each other because they can't agree. I pray for something different tonight. I pray you help us choose to listen to each other with care and to treat each other with dignity and respect, even as we disagree. I pray you give our city council members incredible wisdom and discernment for the good of Kingsburg and everyone who lives here. I know that that is your heart, and that's my prayer for this meeting and for the spirit with which we move forward. I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please join me in the flag salute. Ready? Salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Pursuant to Executive Order 9, 29-20 issued by Governor Gavin Newsom, the council chambers will be open at 50% capacity and that includes our city council members and our city staff to the public. Public will also have the option to call in at 1-425-436-6335 passcode 5290024. At this time, I would like to call the Wednesday, May 19th, 2021, regular session meeting to order. Madam Clerk, can you please take roll call? Council Member Hurtado? Here. Council Member Palmer? Here. Council Member Purcell Jr.? Here. Council Member Rowling? Here. Mayor North? Here. Thank you. Item number two is public comments. This is a time for any citizen to come forward and address the city council on any issue within its jur jurisdiction that is not listed on the agenda. A maximum of five minutes is allowed for each speaker. So that is something that is not on the agenda tonight. Is there anyone here, we'll start within chambers and then we'll move to the phone. Is there anyone in chambers tonight that would like to come forward with any item that is not on the agenda tonight? for any item that is not on the agenda. So no? Okay, so we will open up the phones to see if we have anyone on the phone. 
that has any item that is not on the agenda tonight. Do we have anyone on the phone line that would like to make a public comment on any item not listed on the agenda? Hearing none, we will close public comment. Item number three, we have to approve our agenda that is before us, and I will need a motion for that. Make a motion to approve agenda as presented this evening. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, item number four is going to be a presentation. Um, and before we move on to that next item, um, I have written something that I would like to read. Um, we know that most of the public here tonight is here for this next item, for this presentation. I would like to remind everyone that is in council chambers, as well as in our city, that we show respect to each other. We will listen to the speaker and not interrupt or add comments. We will not tolerate any name calling or any inappropriate or out of control behavior. As citizens of this town and the country, this country, we do have the right to be heard. If anyone becomes disruptive, we will have you removed from chambers. This is Kingsburg and we know how to be respectful. All are welcome here, but if this is something that you can't abide by, then you are welcome to exit the chambers at this time before we do get started. Okay, we will move on to item 4.1, Council Proclamation of the Month of June as LGBTQ Pride Month in the City of Kingsburg. Sponsor and presentation is by Council Member Hurtado. Alrighty, everybody, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. I want to kind of repeat the same message that Mayor Roman just shared with us here. Um, my proposal today, I hope that we can all come into it with an open mind. I think some people have made up their mind, but you know what? I respect that, and I thank you for being here because that is a part of this public process, and I just hope that we can approach our city council and everybody outside and inside with respect. And so um, when this is said and done, I hope we can retain that dignity and be able to go out into the community and, and show respect to one another and love one another because my call here, contrary to popular belief, is not to cause division. It is to recognize and um, uplift one another. So I just wanted to throw that out there um, before we jump into my presentation here. So um, with that being said, um, I want to make another thing very clear. Um, my proposal is for LGBTQ plus Pride Month proclamation and to ask our city council to raise one flag on city hall. Not a parade, um, nothing more, nothing less. Um, and so that's why I've brought this forward to you tonight. So the next slide is going to be a little bit about why I brought this to your attention. Um, move that down, perfect. So as you can read here, and I'll read out loud, um, LGBTQ plus Americans have made and continue to make lasting contributions that strengthen the fabric of our American society. And I think we all know that. I think there are a lot of people in this room and listening on the phone or here at the council dais who love somebody who is a part of this community. And so here in the city of Kingsburg, we pride ourselves on being a town where all can feel welcomed, included, and a place that people are proud to call home. I know I am, and, um, and I know the residents here are, are proud of where they come from and where they live. And so this proclamation doesn't change the world, right? It, we can't do much, but this is one small thing that we can do to show that recognition, uh, recognition and, and love and support for this community. Um, when I first came out, I, it looked like an awkward conversation with my mom, right? It wasn't, um, I knew that I was going to be accepted with love. However, that is not the story for many of the people here in this community. And I want to make another thing very clear. I do not speak for the entire queer community throwing that out there too, because I don't think that my voice is reflective of all. And that's why we're having this meeting tonight. Um, and so just because I have been able to be out and I was elected to this council and I have lived proudly does not mean that I have not faced adversities and hardships um, and that they don't exist within the shadows of this community. I think with the letters that we've been receiving um, for people who are in support, 
who do have the courage to share their stories, that can be very hard. A lot of people cannot do that. And so the reason that I propose this tonight is not for a personal agenda or to further my political career, but this is for the young kids that came to me when I was in high school and told me that they were scared they were going to get kicked out because their parents beat them. They're being gay. Those are the things that we're seeing in the shadows. We cannot do anything about that. But, you know, this is maybe a way we can start, right? And I'm sure there are a lot of other ways we can be creative to, to uh, show support for this community. But um, when your parent tells you that they do not love you because of who you are and because of who you want to love, that can be very hurtful. And I think we can all agree with that. So um, the next slide, um, and I don't want to go too long. I want to really keep it moving, keep it, keep it going. So this next slide here is to acknowledge the history of not only our community, but of um, just the struggles that we have had to go through. Our um, gay community has a distinct and rich history, and it was not too long ago that we could not marry or adopt children, right? And so just because we have made these strides here in our country does not mean that there are not hurdles to overcome biases and education that still needs to be had. So um, I believe that it is important to, to have a proclamation like this to acknowledge that history and, um, you know, kind of talk about how we've come far, but there's still so much more work to do. So here in this slide, it's kind of hard for me to see it here. Um, and I'll read it to you. This photo here is from the Stonewall Inn, which, um, for those of you who do not know, was kind of the start of this, the gay rights movement. And so I'll just read what the slide says there. The gay rights movement in the United States has seen huge progress in the last century, and especially the last two decades. Laws prohibiting homosexual activity have been struck down. Lesbian, gay, and bisexual individuals are now allowed to serve openly in the military. Transgender individuals um, were allowed to serve openly from 2016 until March of 2018 when the new bans were put in place. And same-sex couples can now legally get married and adopt children in all 50 states. So as I mentioned, it's been a long and bumpy road for gay right proponents. Um, we're still tackling a lot of issues like um, advocating for employment, housing, and um, transgender rights. So in this next slide, um, it is a brief timeline of some of the accomplishments and things that we have overcome. These photos, I'm sorry, this um, timeline um, ranges from, sorry, my computer's, um, starting in 1966, and so you can read all of that there, but I'll read it to you anyways, just in case the people are on the phone and they aren't seeing the presentation. So in 1966 um, was um, the Compton's Cafeteria Riot, so transgender folks and drag queens in San Francisco uh, reacted to ongoing harassment by police force. Um, 1969 were the Stonewall Riots, really popular in response to unprovoked police raid of a gay bar, 400 gay people, uh, lesbians, bisexuals, transgender folks, and straight people protested this treatment. And um, that's kind of this pivotal moment that started this movement. In 1981, we, we saw the AIDS epidemic, and a lot of us, I mean, I wasn't, but a lot of us were around when that was happening, and really um, got to see the lack of acknowledgement, resources, and um, help for our community specifically during this time. The U.S. Center for Disease Control reported that the first cases of this rare lung disease named AIDS um, were affecting women and children who would die from AIDS through 2007. 2015, the right to marry. It was just 2015. It wasn't that long ago. Um, the court voted five to four that the fundamental right to marry is guaranteed to same-sex couples. 2017, we got the right to adopt. Once again, not that long ago, the Supreme Court reversed the Arkansas Supreme Court ruling and couples were able to adopt children. And last but not least in 2020, and this was just last year, Bostock versus Clayton, a landmark Supreme Court case that protects employees from discrimination because they are gay or transgender. And so um, 
I wanted to to share this to give us a brief timeline because while we've made so many accomplishments and strides um, as a young queer person it can sometimes feel like it's just normal um, even though we do face hardships but to dig into the history is what really makes it beautiful for us to, to see and to acknowledge so on this next slide I wanted there to be a visual representation of some of the hate that our community has endured. So these photos range from back in the 60s um, to the AIDS epidemic, Prop 8, the present day. Um, there are some tweets in there from people who live in the city of Kingsburg. And, um, you know, it's, it's really disgusting because there are people who think that homosexuals are or have caused earthquakes natural disasters, famines, um, the attack on Twin Towers, all the way to this COVID pandemic. And so this here gives a very clear picture of some of that hate that our community has had to face. Thankfully, once again, it has gotten a lot better, but right there, breaking 2021 becomes record year for anti-transgender legislation. Um, homosexuals are possessed by demons. I think that's kind of Pictures worth a thousand words. The next slide here, I want to share a couple of statistics um, done on a survey in 2021. Sorry, I'm trying to make this bigger so I can see. So the Trevor's Project 2021 National Survey on LGBTQ plus youth, um, our mental health. So this is a survey with some insights on the unique challenges that our youth face every day. And so 40% of LGBTQ uh, respondents seriously considered attempting suicide in the past 12 months. And this was in 2020. Um, with more than half transgender and non-binary youth having um, seriously considered suicide. 61% of transgender and non-binary youth reported being prevented or discouraged from using the bathroom that corresponds with their gender identity. 48% of LGBTQ youth reported engaging in self-harm in the past 12 months, including over 60% of transgender and non-binary youth. 46% of LGBTQ youth report that they wanted um, psychological or emotional counseling from a mental health professional, but were unable to receive that help. 86% of our community's youth said, recent politics have negatively affected their, um, impacted their well-being. 10% of the youth in our community reported undergoing conversion therapy. Next slide here is kind of giving a brief history on why the flag would mean something to us to be have flown. Also gonna make this bigger, sorry. So the rainbow flag was created in 1978. Artist, designer, Vietnam War veteran, and then drag performer Gilbert Baker was the person who was reached out to by um, politician Harvey Milk, who was, um, Harvey Milk was, um, the first openly elected gay person, and he served on the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. And so Baker died in 1931 of 2017 um, at the age of 65, just two years after the legalization of same-sex marriage, and his legacy lives on in the six-colored flag that flies proudly every gay pride month, recognizing the lives and loves of the LGBTQ plus worldwide. And so the different colors within this flag were meant to represent togetherness. Um, since this community ranges from so many different types of people, um, the original, um, I'm sorry, races, ages, genders, um, and rainbows are both natural and beautiful. And so the original flag did have eight colors, but now it just includes six, each having a different meaning. And those are kind of um, pointed out there. So we have life um, at the top, I'm sorry, red for life, orange for healing, um, yellow for signifying sunlight, green for nature, blue for serenity, and finally violet um, for spirit. Um, all right, so 
the eighth slide here, the next one, sorry. The reason I put this together is I, I really think us here at the council, like we can all agree with this, just because another city is doing it does not mean that we're gonna do anything, right? I think we're very, teams work proud. We're, we're in our own lane. We can look to other cities for maybe, you know, we can lean on them and, and this and that, but um, in the city of Kingsburg, you know, I know this isn't gonna carry much weight here is what I'm trying to say. But what I did wanna show was kind of the different populations of these cities who have passed something. Now they all don't hang a rainbow flag. Um, some of them do. Fresno is a huge city, right? So um, not nearly close in size population, but our town is around 12,000. I mean, we don't have the latest census numbers, but we know that we're a really tiny, tiny town. And so um, I just think that it would be um, really beautiful to be one of the first small cities, um, less than 25,000 people, to recognize um, June as Pride Month. All right, and the last slide here, um, and once again, I want to make very clear that this does not represent the entire queer community here within our city, and I know that very well, um, but these are just a couple of quotes that I um, wanted to add because I thought it would um, show that there are, and it's only four quotes, but show some support, and I want to read them, read them to you. So, some will argue that Kings Kingsburg welcomes all, and if someone feels unwelcome, then that's on them. We are really good at victim blaming and terrible at looking at the reality, especially when it puts us on the stand. For those who would say, well, I haven't seen prejudice in Kingsburg against the LGBTQ+, I answer with, I have. The next quote in red, as someone who spent their entire childhood in Kingsburg, having a Pride Month within Kingsburg would mean so much for both the growth of our town and the growth and support of our town's people. Growing up as a member within the LGBT community in Kingsburg was not easy, but I believe that this pride within our town will show our children and adults there is hope and we can be our true selves within our town. By officially recognizing the month of June as Pride Month, Kingsburg affirms its commitment to stand for the whole community, including its often marginalized members it sends a message that our LGBTQ plus citizens are equally valued and considered by the city of Kingsburg. The last quote here is a little long in blue. Growing up gay in Kingsburg, I was bullied and ostracized throughout my entire upbringing. People would make fun of me for the way that I walked, the music I listened to, the kids I hung out with, the clothes that I wore, and just about every other typical gay stereotype that you can imagine. Even as a high schooler and an adult, I have had slurs and insults shouted at me by strangers in passing cars. Quotes like effing you know what and F you queer while walking around our town on a regular basis. There are a great number of LGBTQ plus citizens in our town that are there always have been and there always will be. By recognizing Pride Month in Kingsburg, we can take a step in the right direction to help mend its relationships with queer residents. And so um, that is my presentation tonight. Um, if this one step that we can make towards making a quick comment, and um, we're going to begin with in-person comments, and as soon as we're done with in-person comments, then we will open it up to those that are on the phone for their comments. So when you speak, please state your name and your address for the record. Each speaker will have two minutes and a timer will be shown on the TV screen up here for the purposes of time and to ensure everyone gets a chance to address the council. Please do not repeat what others have previously said. because we're going to allow others to come in so that everybody has a chance to speak.
inner noise that prevents us from taking the comments. So with that being said, what we'll do is we'll start in the very back. I think we have two in the back and then three. So all five of you, if you would like to come have public comment, you can make a line here. And then what we'll ask you to do is after you give your public comment, then you can go ahead and exit. And as soon as those five exit, we'll... youth can go to um, request support and um, just a place for them to be able to be themselves. I know that's what we're looking for is the support for them to just be themselves, be accepted. Um, but the opposite end of that is us as a gay community kind of are a little bit of hypocritical sometimes. You know, we ask for love and support wholeheartedly and we don't seem to give that to the other side. If you don't support me, I still love you wholeheartedly and that's your opinion. So instead of flying a flag and forcing people to believe in what we believe, I think a support group would do a lot better. So I have created a cash app for the people who are gung-ho wanting to support this and wanting to help our queer community um, is Kingsburg Pride. And if we go ahead and get that started, I already have some volunteers and we have time slots already pitched out for this. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I want to go with things. I think that it would do a lot better than waving a flag and kind of rubbing it in the faces of people who don't quite accept that as their views. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Erica Evans. Um, I live at 1601 21st Avenue here in Kingsburg. Um, you want to hold on just a second? Yes. It's really loud when they open the door. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> My name is Erica Evans. I live at 1601 21st Avenue here in Kingsburg. Um, I just want to say that I'm opposed. Thank you. You can come on up. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Council. My name is Virginia Bogard. I live at 1551 6th and Half Avenue, and I am here only to say that I am opposed. Thank you. In, in the back row, do we have others that want to speak? Okay. And then do we want to go ahead and let the <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. No. There we go. No, I just... <laughs> we just want to make sure we can hear you all. Hi, Michelle. Bye. My name is Michelle Nicholas, and I live at 2625 Sandell Avenue here in Kingsburg. My son Benjamin is 20 years old, lives in Kingsburg, and he is gay. As a mother and educator, I know there is a lack of education about LGBTQ people. I am here to educate you about what it's like to raise a gay child in Kingsburg. First, I want to say that no one, including parents, can make you gay. Kids do not decide or choose to be gay. Just because they have a gay friend or read about homosexuality does not make them become gay. You can only know this if you have raised a gay child. A child is born gay, like my son Ben. 
Growing up, his teachers described him as friendly, polite, and respectful child. Once he reached adolescence, his sexuality became a big secret. As a parent, I wanted him to be accepted and loved and feel safe here in Kingsburg. I felt the only way to accomplish this was not to talk about his sexuality. After all, he held student leadership positions at school. He was recognized as a top 10 student in his class. He was part of the worship team at church, as well as being involved in many other community activities. The indirect messages concerning LGBT people were clear. The message I received as a parent was that being gay was bad. There was no place in Kingsburg for affirmation of LGBTQ people. There was no way I could disclose his sexu sexuality for fear of the rejection and ridicule our family might face. That hurt would have been unbearable. In high school, people shouted homophobic slurs at him as he walked across the high school campus. He put the ridicule aside because his father and I raised him to be a kind and respectful person. He could have gone to administrators but he never observed any affirmation towards LGBTQ students on campus. He assumed his complaints would fall on deaf ears. I am proud of Ben to have carried his head high and ignored the disrespect he encountered. Unfortunately, today, people still yell homophobic slurs at him. It makes me sad, and I am fearful every time he walks out the door. Is that my timer? Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you Michelle. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'll speak quickly. Hello, my name is Benjamin Nicholas. I was born and raised in Kingsburg and I am queer. I'm attending this meeting tonight because of how incredibly excited I am about the vote that is taking place tonight because I believe that it has the potential to do an incredible amount of good for our community. Growing up in Kingsburg, I was bullied and ostracized for my hair alone. The sad truth about growing up queer, especially in a place like Kingsburg, is that it is such a profoundly lonely experience. We are told often that we don't belong here and that we need to change ourselves in order to be seen as worthy and loved by the people around us. Growing up closeted, you spend years coming through every single detail of every interaction with the people around you to try and determine whether or not you can feel safe around them. I spent my childhood obsessively keeping track of asides, one-liners, and subtext in conversations with people I cared about so I could know whether they were safe to be vulnerable with and invest in or if they were left after graduating. I want you to ask yourself why these people who care about this community enough to be writing you so long after leaving ever left in the first place. I cannot ask and answer that question myself, but after 20 years of obsessively combing through the culture in our town, I can safely say that Kingsburg has never been a place that I have seen as a safe option for me to live as a queer person. And tonight, you have an opportunity to change that for people like me. There are a great amount of queer people living in this town. There always have been and there always will be. They are serving you food and ringing up your groceries. They are teaching in your schools. They are attending your churches. They are in your children's friend groups and they are members of your families. If you do not believe this to be true, then you are lying to yourselves. By recognizing this, you can show that everyone in our community is loved regardless of what they wear, who they identify as, and who they love themselves. I sincerely hope that these values are as important to you as they are to me, and I look forward to hearing your vote. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. What beauty and bravery. Benjamin, you're loved. And I'm here because I'm against bullies. My name is Daniel O'Connell. I'm executive director of the Central Valley Partnership. We are a multiracial, intergenerational, gender-inclusive network spanning the southern San Joaquin Valley. I start off by just asking, why is this so controversial? We're a pluralistic society based on tolerance. It's painful to witness what's outside right now. Or another question. Is there any better justification for having Pride Month than to witness the outpouring of fear-mongering, hypocrisy, bigotry, and hatred that the city of Kingsburg is witnessing this evening? Your vote will illustrate both your own character and the character of your city. It's a moment in history. We know that the LGBTQ community has historically been prejudiced, experienced insane violence. Benjamin, we know, will continue because of his speaking tonight, experience 
potential violence. Your own city councilwoman has, has been receiving threats. If you don't vote in this one, you'll enter history on the side of the Klan and the Proud Boys and all the bigots, or you can do something brave and stand with the weak, the vulnerable, the marginalized that are in your community, in your families. If you vote for this, against this, in the future, you'll, you'll see a member of your own family come and talk to you about it. It won't be pretty tight. I want to finish by just speaking to the LGBT community and those listening tonight and let them know that they are loved and respected and valued. We all support Pride Month, Pride Year, and this bravery that's happening right now, especially with my friend Jewel Hurtado making this stand. I Thank you very much, Jewel. Hi, my name is Chris Peterson, 172 Meadow Lane, Kingsburg, and I'm a heterosexual, but who cares? Okay, who cares? Um, I have, I wouldn't say a lot, I have gay friends on three continents that I communicate with regularly. I don't see the ones that live in foreign countries very often, especially the last year, for obvious reasons. I have dined with my gay friends on Draper Street, oh, in restaurants, on not on Draper Street, but on, in restaurants on Draper Street. So the issue is not one's sexuality, and I really don't think anyone really cares. Um, so that's one issue. Um, there's always been hate, unfortunately. People hate females. Some people hate females. Some people hate educators, especially right now after COVID. Some people hate cops. Um, unfortunately, that exists, and schoolyard bullies exist, and high school drama, and I'm not talking about the drama club. High school drama exists, and one thing we've learned from COVID is that a lot of students don't want to come back to the high school because of the drama, and it has nothing to do with sexuality, and they're getting A's and B's, they're doing their work, and they're perfectly happy, more power to them. Um, Councilwoman Hurtado talked about the importance of a flag, and, and that when the AIDS ep epidemic hit, and unfortunately I am old enough to remember that, um, that was sad, and that was a, a, an awakening for America. And she talked about not having resources. Well, gee, we've just finished a pandemic called COVID, and around the world there haven't been resources in every spot where people have experienced COVID. Do we get a COVID flag out now too? Um, and quickly, the three of you, there's three of you on this council that are, are pawns for one council person's uh, political aspirations. So consider that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Leah Jackson, 12399 East Cam. Michelle, Nora. Yes. Um, Ms. Hurtado, I saw your TikTok video, and I will say I was a little thrown back by it. I get gay pride, heck, my best friend is gay, way back in the 70s, when nobody came out then. But a month-long flag, something else can be done instead. So I'm offering you a blank check right here, and I'm willing to write it out to you for a one-way ticket for you and your son to move to Washington, D.C., so you can be in AOC's district. She is who you aspire to be. Thank you. Thank you. Before we call the next group up, please, please remember to be respectful. If we can have the next row come on up for comment. We'll wait to start your time until the door shuts so it's a little quieter for you. Yeah. Yeah. 
they start to climb. Just so it doesn't get in the time to start to climb. No address. If you can say your name and your address or that you're a resident before your time starts so it doesn't take in um, into part of your time. Are we good? Okay. My name is Shauna Johnson. I am a resident. I also own and operate the Imaginarium Learning Center here downtown. Um, I also grew up in Kingsburg. I grew up with kids that were part of the LGBTQ plus community. The only thing is I didn't know most of them were part of that community or identifying as gay, lesbian, transgender, and so on because they were scared. They didn't want to be judged. They didn't want to be bullied or ostracized. We are not a separatist community. We are vast, diverse, and a quilt that walks uh, of all walks of life in this town. But it seems as though those that have the loudest voice and make the big biggest decisions in this community are those that follow a certain frame of mind and belief system. I'm a straight, Christian, white female, but I love my non-straight, non-Christian, non-white neighbors. This is what makes a community thrive. Diversity, recognition, and most importantly, acceptance. Um, we just had an entire weekend celebrating the great Swedish culture and having Swedish days, and I think that it's time to recognize and celebrate another group of people that live, work, and serve this town with the same amount of love. Think of what little support could do for your student, your neighbor, or even your own child who may just be part of this community but too afraid to show it. Think of how much heartbreak, confusion, and relocating we would avoid by simply wasting or stating that we as a whole are allies. We'd rather have members of our town move away and start a fresh life in a new place because they felt they had no voice. I've been teaching preschool for almost 20 years, and some of my students have grown up to identify in the community. Um, they didn't turn gay or transgender. They were simply born that way, and I pray, sorry, I pray that they know that I love and cherish them just as much as any other child that's walked through my doors. <laughs> sorry. This isn't an issue of moral or family values. This is an issue of basic human rights and celebrating just how beautiful we all are when we can truly be ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Danny Valchaw, and I'm a resident of Kingsburg. As the city council may or may not be aware, June is the month of a number of remembrance and recognitions. Why would and should the city of Kingsburg be recognizing only one single item for the month of June where there are so many others? The citizens of Kingsburg would like to know, what accomplishments has the LGBTQ plus organization done directly to help and improve the city of Kingsburg as a whole. Uh, for, an or, uh, for, for an organization to be recognized and celebrated by the city of Kingsburg for the whole entire month, there must have been a great selfless act done for our community by this organization. We the citizens of Kingsburg can't wait to see this lengthy detailed list of selfless acts and accomplishments done. The key to to the city of Kingsburg and its great accomplishments have solely come from the unity within our community. In a rough year when the world has been turned torn apart and our great community has come together to help one another, if LGBTQ is passed for a month of June, it will only, only uh, further divide us and tear out the heartbeat of what makes our city so great, which is unity. Federal holidays are, design, are designated by the United States Congress in Title V or Title V of the United States Code, 5 U.S.C. Section 6103. Congress has the authority to create holidays solely for federal institutions, including federally owned properties, employees, and for the District of Columbia. LGBTQ plus Pride Month has not been recognized or passed by the, by the United States Congress as a national holiday or month. The city of Kingsburg should not be overstepping the United States Congress, recognizing a self-proclaimed national holiday by a sole organization. Thank you, that's all I have. Thank you. My name is Chris Hernandez. I live at 16741 South Bethel. Um, you know, hearing everybody talk, it's interesting, right? Uh, I'm 40. I was. I've been here my whole life. I was born here when they had a hospital, and uh, it's been great. Kingsburg's been a great city, great little town, and, and I love every part of it, everything about it. You know, raising raising an individual's flag 
I, I that I don't understand. Um, you're, you're separating yourself, in my opinion, from everybody that does that. You know, driving down Kingsburg, they have a flag for everybody. It's literally tons of them, and it's the American flag. So America, that, that represents all of us, the Hispanics, the Asians, the African Americans, the whites. It, it doesn't matter what it is. You know, so I understand that everybody has their differences that they go through as a Hispanic. My name is Cam Hayes. I live at 231 Meadow Lane, Kingsburg, California, and I'm proud of it. Okay, the first thing I'd like to say is I am not anti-LGBTQ or anything else. I am here because I love Kingsburg. I want the best for Kingsburg. I've been a longtime resident. My mom and dad went to high school here. I went to high school here. My kids went to high school here. I've been here a long time, and this to me is not about what the flag represents it's the matter of just soloing it put it out there where it's it doesn't have anything to do once we start opening a flag for this there are going to be people that want flags for this and we're going to have another month they want this they want that they have a month for this and a month for that i don't think we need to encourage the fact that it's other people's agendas that are being set here. For a minority of people that want this, there's a majority of people that probably don't. And I'm not against any of this, but I just think this small town, I love this small town because of the way it makes you feel. It makes you feel safe. We've done more here to, today to separate this town than we ever have in my lifetime. I've never been down here to speak like this before, and that's because I think we've, we've put a a split between this town over something that I think is probably happens, but you're not going to stop any kind of badgering, making fun of. Everybody gets me. I got made fun of. Everybody's been made fun of from somewhere on the playground or at school or at other thing. I mean, I have gay friends. I have a gay nephew, and I know that he said that people have said stuff to him, but you're not going to stop by, by putting up a flag and having a month celebration. That's really all I've got to say about it. Thank you. Thanks. Good evening, Mayor North and honorable uh, members of our council. I am a Kingsburg resident. I don't want to give my address, um, but if you need it, I can give that later. Um, First of all, I'd just like to thank you for allowing this public discourse. I think that that's important. I think that we all can agree that civic engagement and having our voices heard as part of the public process. And that was actually why Jewel ran for council. So I think that she um, she fulfilled her campaign promise. Um, with that said, I wasn't going to come tonight. For those of you that don't know, um, I'm Jewel's mom. And so obviously I'm biased. Obviously I support my daughter. Um, so I wasn't going to speak, and I really not rarely do when she proposes things because obviously I'm on her side. So Jewel, I want to apologize to you for what I'm about to say because I know that this is a difficult topic. And, um, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what I'm about to say. Um, for those that don't know my daughter, um, she was raised in a Christian home. Her great-grandfather was a Baptist missionary, preacher. She was born and raised in church. By the age of seven, she would fill in for the church pianist. She traveled the world doing missionary work. She picked up children from Motel Drive, children of prostitutes and drug addicts. These people are still in our lives to this day. My daughter practices what she preaches. My daughter does the hard work. My daughter listens. She was raised in a Christian school. In eighth grade, I made the decision to put her into uh, uh, enroll her at Rafer Johnson. She attended Rafer and the Kingsburg uh, High School School District. It was no surprise to me when students began reaching out to her on a very regular basis. It happens to this day. 15, 16, 17 years old, I am on the brink of suicide. If I tell my parents who I am, they will disown me. 
I'm talking members, prominent members of this community, and I won't say more for fear of giving away who they are. My daughter talked your children off of the ledge many a times, and she continues to do it. We continue to get um, notes left at our door. We continue to get messages left. Last I'll say is that I was never more proud of this council than when you went and you prayed with people at the park. And Mayor North, you said it best. When hate is loud, love has to be louder. I encourage the council to search your heart and your conscience tonight. Love has to be louder. And I don't care what they say. Love has to be louder. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ginger Seltzer, and I am a Kingsburg resident. I prefer not to give my address um, because what I have to say is a little controversial. I am a very proud lesbian woman. I'm 57 years old. I've lived in this town since I was 11. Met Coach Lane on my very first day of school, and I guarantee you that man probably knew I was a little queer girl, and he never cared, never. I've never felt more welcome than this town. I came back here 2000 and I'm, I've been back here, but in 2007, before it was legal, I adopted my daughter as a single gay woman living in Kingsburg. She is 100% Hispanic, so I'm not present in any which way. But I do want to say this, just by the very definition, LGBTQIA, Plus, which includes pansexual, polyamorous, neutrois, um, same gender loving, uh, ginger F word, that just means screw everyone that doesn't agree, hetero flexible, and all those, they're all in that rainbow flag, okay? So by its very definition, it is now, you, we, consider it one people. Okay, we don't have a flag that welcome the French, yet they come. We don't have a flag that says, welcome to Canadians, yet they come. And if it's just about cultures, we don't have a flag that says, welcome bikers, they come. We're, nobody's unwelcome here. Nobody's unwelcome to come here, okay? What I do also wanna say about one of the other gentlemen, that was a falsehood. In 1999, President Bill Clinton proclaimed June Gay Pride Month, okay? I don't know what Bush did, but, because I was a liberal still then. Anyways, and then um, after that, Obama, who I voted for twice, because I thought maybe he would come around. Anyways, I voted for him twice. He also proclaimed Pride Month as June. So did Trump. Now, I don't know what Biden's done, because he doesn't know what he's doing. But <laughs> anyways, even Trump said it's Pride Month. So by that very definition, United States has proclaimed June as Pride Month. And by that flag that has all those stripes and all those stars, by its very definition, encompasses every citizen within its boundaries, including you, including me, including all of you. We don't need to have our own little pro proclamation of pride for one people. I'm everything. I'm a veteran. I'm gay. I'm adoptive mother to a Mexican child. I'm, good God, I'm everything. I am, I'm everybody in one body here. And I feel welcome and I don't need a flag to invite me or to tell me that they accept me. Because I know a lot of you here on this board and a lot of you out here. You guys have known me forever. I'm very outspoken and I'm very out there. And anybody that ever wants to ask me a question, I'm open to answer. I've always felt included, and I've always felt welcome, and I've always felt loved, and I've always offered it. And there are many gay youth that have called me in the last few weeks that have, and especially since I went on Facebook, they've all been calling me, saying, Ginger, Ginger thank you. Thank you, because we're afraid to speak up. We want our quiet little life here. We don't want to be out there and proud. We want, to, we want the humbleness of Kingsburg. That's why I live here. That's why I raised my daughter here. I can go to Fresno and kick up my gay heels. I could go to Fresno and be big and gay. 
in Kingsburg, I want the humbleness and the quiet serenity of a small town that doesn't give a rip. Thank you. Thank you, Ginger. And I love little Ben and that very first girl. Awesome. I love. I even love you, Jewel. I love her. I don't know. I'm just like her. I just like her. I think we're up to the second row from the front if you would like to line up and then just wait a second as they usher others in. My name's Henry Garcia. If you can hold on just a second, we want to make sure that we can hear you. Okay. All right. My name is Henry Garcia, and thank you all for listening to everybody. And uh, there's a lot of good comments and a lot of bad comments, but uh, I spent six years of my life, you know, in the military. And again, I think my nephew Chris said it, that there's plenty of flags out there. We don't need a new flag in this town. We have an American flag and we have a California flag. We need to stay with that. Uh, six years that I spent during Vietnam, other places, uh, you, uh, it's kind of upsetting, you know, all this stuff, you know, that they're, uh, you know, we've lost a lot of soldiers and stuff like that. And, and to be arguing over a flag right now, I, I don't think we need it, you know, and, and that's my opinion. I don't believe we need that flag. We have uh, plenty of people out there that'll agree with everybody that half of what they're saying and half of what they're not saying. But uh, that's all I got to say. Just, you know, really think about it. And like he said, the gentleman just left, or, you know, that uh, this town is a nice, quiet town. And that's why a lot of people come here. They enjoy the tranquility and stuff like that. And um, I don't. You know, I've been here all my life, man, and I'm I'm gonna stay here. You know, so just we have an American flag. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for serving. I'm Jen Guerra. I'm a resident of Kingsburg. Uh, I want to thank you, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council Members for this opportunity to speak about the possible proclamation of Pride Month in Kingsburg. I am here in support of the proclamation because I feel this is important to our LGBTQI plus community in town. There are many of us that don't feel seen or heard or that we are outcasts in our own community. I came out when I was 13 and luckily found a group of like-minded friends in school who supported each other. I'm not going to say it was easy because it wasn't. Myself and my friends were subjected to hate, threats and discrimination from fellow students, teachers and people in the community. Luckily, most of us made it out okay, but some of us did not. Unfortunately, suicide, depression and addiction can overtake people when they don't feel accepted, seen or heard by their family or community. The Pride Proclamation in Kingsburg can help fellow LGBTQIA plus feel inclusion in our community and be excited about the progress of equality in our small town. We should be able to live without fear and embrace diversity. I hope you will join me in support of voting for the Pride Proclamation. Thank you. Hello, my name is Stephanie Durow. I live at 457 West Forest. I have many gay friends and I love them all with deep respect and love. However, I am opposed. As a parent, I know a lot of people were talking about how kids are bullied. Um, as a parent, it is my job to affirm my children. It is not the school system's job. It's not the church's job. It's not the community's job. It is my job as a parent to affirm my children. 
All of my children, I have four, they have all been bullied in school. Not because of their sex, because one's too tall and one's too chubby and one doesn't like that kind of kid because they're kids. And sometimes kids are mean. And that sucks. And that sucks for everyone. Not just because of their sexuality, because people, unfortunately, were wrought with sin. That's how we were created. And by the grace of God, we can be different. I'm going to say, a flag is not going to change the hearts of people. Only the love of Jesus and following his command to love your neighbor will change, not a flag. With that being said, loving your neighbor also includes respecting those who are around you who do not agree with you and not by shaming them and calling them homophobes or bigots. My opinion matters too. I am important too. Jewel, I'm in your district. It doesn't appear that you are concerned with what I think or with what other people in our district think. I have never talked to you at, on one-on-one -on -one as people, but as far as city goes, I've never spoken to you. Unfortunately, I feel like you don't hear me. And actually, sometimes I think you don't care. But that's not you. I know you. And I know you care about people. I, I do. You mentioned at the beginning to keep an open mind. So please, keep an open mind. Listen to people who are here. Listen to what they want for their community. Represent everyone in your district. And for all of you, everyone, love your neighbor. Yes, I'm a resident of Kingsburg. My name is Patricia Chavez, and I oppose this. My name is Virginia Barkley. I'm from here, Kingsburg, and I oppose this as well. We will let the next group exit, and then the front row, it's your turn if you want to come stand up. Um, and we'll wait until they shut the door so we can make sure to hear you. I didn't see it down there. Hi, my name is Gina Chapel. I'm a resident, and I am in agreement with some of the things said before, so I'm just here to say I oppose this. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mary Bell Sorensen, and I'm a resident of Dinuba. But I attend church here, and I know a lot of the people in this community. There are a lot of really great people, and Kingsburg is an awesome place to be. And with that said, um, I am opposed only for the, for the simple reason of um, it doesn't represent um, every uh, person that would like to have a flag or a special month. Um, I understand the passion that Mr. Tato has and uh, the bullying and all that. Um, I have an autistic son. I would love to have an autistic flag flown or, or a special month. Or, um, but how, do we be, how are we inclusive for everybody? Um, and there's a lot of children that are suffering from suicide for so many, many different reasons, and especially last year. And I love what that first gal had to say um, about having something uh, done that uh, provides straight one-on-one -on -one, um, attention to what is actually happening in the community. Um, I think that this would be more divisive than inclusive. Um, and uh, that is my statement. Thank you this evening. Thank you for um, your presentation, Mr. Tato. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, um, I'm Tammy Rosenberg. I, I was a longtime resident of Kingsburg until December 31st, 2020. I moved to Dinuba because the house was cheaper. <laughs> but uh, um, I want to say that I'm opposed to having a flag specifically for this group, um, for any group. It should be all inclusive for all of Kingsburg. Like these, a lot of people said, it's the United States flag. It includes everybody. 
Um, I am a Christian. I do believe in the Bible and its scriptures. And it says that that behavior is a sin. And um, I can't dispute that because I'm a believer of the Bible. But it also says love covers a multitude of sins. So we're supposed to love everybody. And I agree with everybody that came up here like the last five people. <laughs> but uh, um, I just want to say that um, I did write a few emails to everybody. So there is some other things like you can't set a precedence and set one flag above any other flag. So if you're going to put one flag out there, then you're going to have to put a flag for everybody. And that opens the door, like Cam said, to a lot of other things. So um, I appreciate your time. And I think I'm going to be up. I'm fast. <laughs> but um, I appreciate everybody. And I love everybody. So if you need counseling for any issues, come to our church. It's Kingsburg, Re Kingsburg Refinery. And I know a lot of other churches here in town that offer counseling. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Rebecca Bickham. I'm a resident, and I just wanted to say first that I am a Christian. I do believe in God. Um, I also have a very close family member who is in an LGBTQ community, and um, but I do believe that resources maybe we need for that situation. I don't believe that hanging a flag would be any beneficial to anything. Um, I have three kids that are young. They're teenagers and littler than that. And I believe that um, I am a person of love. Like, I will love everybody. I will help everybody. It doesn't matter what your skin color is. It doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't matter what your orientation is. It's it, people are people. Why can't we just love people for being people? That's all I'm saying. And, you know, God is the same back then that he is today that he'll be tomorrow. He never changes. We change, but God doesn't. And God says to love everyone. And that is what I want to do. I just want to love everybody. And people need to just respect people. Everybody has their own decisions. Um, I like to bleach my hair and dye it. And some people have a problem with that. But that's okay. <laughs> so that's all that I want to say. I'm opposed of this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is Christopher Flores, and I'm a Kingsburg resident. Um, straight up, yeah, I may be from Kingsburg, I may be from California, I may be from the United States, but before, and most of all, I am a child of God. And, and we believe that hanging a flag and dividing a community is wrong. So instead of hanging a flag, because we have so many flags already, why don't we just hang a cross out there and unite everybody instead of dividing this community. I think that's way more better than hanging a flag. Let's hang a cross above City Hall and unite Kingsburg instead of dividing it. Thank you. Thank you. We'll wait for that group to exit, and we will now start with the back row again. So I think we have two and three, so a total of five people, if you can come forward and line up. And then we'll wait for the door to close before we, we have you talk. Okay, thanks. <laughs> yes. Come on up, Mike. <laughs> okay, well, first off, all y'all know me except for uh, Mr. Brussel, first time we met, and, and I appreciate the communication we have back and forth. I did send in a uh, public record. I'm not going to address that or cover the same areas, but there were a few things that I wanted to 
Oh, I'm sorry. I th everybody knows me. Sorry. I'm Mike Dunn. I am a resident. Uh, my wife said don't give the address. She's a little more squeamish than I am about that sort of thing. Anyway, um, uh, first off, uh, I would have recommended that you table this until you got to a bigger venue because the crowd is big outside. Some have left and gone home and won't even hear it or, or participate in the comments. Um, anyway, um, uh, but based on, uh, as I mentioned all you folks and for those to hear, based on the review of the uh, the uh, public records that were posted yesterday evening, 89 percent, 175 out of 195 local residents um, were uh, are opposed to this. I think the comments uh, 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 echoed that as well. That should tell you something. Um, but if the, um, the uh, board is inclined to open Pandora's box, uh, what would pre prevent someone from seeking a similar res resolution to fly 12 flags, one for each month of the year, supporting their pet cause? For example, in April, Easter, why not fly a flag that says he is risen? I mean, it may be only a portion of the community, but it's a flag that, that represents that, that group. Uh, maybe uh, the Christian flag in December, uh, you know, with the big white flag with the, with the blue field and, and, the, and the red cross, because after all, it is Christmas. Uh, the, um, the Patriots Day uh, and MIA POW flags in September and October might be good things, and you guys might all get behind that. But would you get behind um, uh, commemorating the um, passage of the Second Amendment and indeed all of the, uh, the Bill of Rights um, by flying an NRA flag? We'll probably have fewer of you willing to do that. Um, the, or in, um, uh, in May, the National um, uh, uh, Police Appreciation Week. Why not flag, fly the, uh, the back the blue, red, blue, or the uh, uh, thin blue line flag? Um, those are examples I'm talking about, which are very likely and can, very, can be predicted to be coming before you if, if you decide to do this. Um, anyway, so that having said that, and I don't want to repeat what I have said before, I thank you for your time, and, and I do hope and pray that you. Uh, Consider all the comments and uh, and, and you know, vote uh, accordingly. Thank you. Hi, Karen. Um, my name is Karen Garcia, and I'm a resident of Kingsburg. And I just want to tell the board thank you very much for allowing. I came last month for our dinner, and I thank them for allowing us to do that. Um, I am opposed to this, but I, I just want to say with that, it's not a personal thing. I, uh, my husband's from here, and uh, we came here, well, I, when we got married, Kyle came up in, in school, and he was often at times left out because he was not part of the Kingsburg uh, born and raised thing. And you know that I have a special needs son, I, I understand hurt and I understand rejection, but I agree with the mom that said, you know, it's our responsibility. It is our responsibility as parents to raise our children. It's our responsibility to care and nurture. I don't think that we live in an imperfect world. You know, that's the thing. We're going to have hurts. We're going to have disappointments. People are going to be terrible. You know, but it's all about how we conduct ourselves. I don't think, you know, looking out at the crowd out there, I think that, you know, acting all rowdy and acting as if you are less than is ridiculous as well. I think that we are all just people. I, I agree with the bulk of that. And I understand that, you know, there have been injustices, but we live in a world of injustice. And it's just our responsibility to take care of our own actions and do the best that we can. And I just see that this has such a potential for division, and that makes me sadder than anything. So. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Bri. Hi. Um, my name is Brianna Garcia. I am a resident of Kingsburg. Um, I'm actually in District 1 also. Um, and I am opposed um, to you know, flying the flag and the parade. You know, I, I just want to say, um, I actually grew up in Dinuba, and um, being a white girl in a predominantly Hispanic town, um, I too was subject to backlash. Um, I Most of my junior high years were spent hiding and avoiding people and being in the bathroom and coming home and crying my eyes out. Like, we've heard it a lot tonight. Like, there's a lot of 
um, bullying. Kids are mean. Kids are terrible. It's, I'm not saying it's right, but it unfortunately it does happen. And I I do stand behind um, what you know several individuals have already said. It's like it's it's divisive. It's not. I think like considering what's going on outside and stuff, we can already tell that it's not benefiting. And you know, for me, I am I am a straight woman. And how do I celebrate that? I celebrate that by I, I had the freedom to get married. I, I chose who I wanted to date. I wanted to date a man. I dated a man. I married a man. I'm starting a family with a man. And I celebrate that by celebrating our wedding anniversary and going out on dates and posting our cute pictures on Facebook. And like, if people don't like that then they don't have to like or they don't have to share or they don't have they don't have to see it and I you know that's if if you want to celebrate the LBGTQ plus like celebrate that way but it's like it doesn't have to be shoved down everybody's throats it doesn't have to be like slammed in the face of like no we have to have our month because again we have a flag for that we have a flag to bring us together we are Americans at the end of the day and I believe those flags are California flag and our American flag and yeah our Swedish flag because that is what this town is it represents culture um, here and those are the flags that we should be flying so thank you for your time thank you. Thank you. my name is Brigitta Peters and I live in district 1 and I oppose Thank you. Hey, Coach Lane. <laughs> I see a few faces in here I know. My name is Steve Lane. Taught in 1974 to 2006. I've had many people in this room as students and many, many more outside these doors as students. And I want you to know that I don't care whether you're gay, lesbian, whatever you are, you have to be a good person. And people will like you not for what you are, but who you are. Being a good person, a good neighbor, a good mother, a good father, a good, just a good person. And I see a lot of good people here. And it doesn't matter of what sexual preference you are. That is immaterial. Being a good person is what counts. Now, saying that, I disagree with the flag. There's only one flag. I fought for that flag. I served 14 and a half months in Vietnam for that flag. And I served that time for all of you, not just the straights or the non-straights, whatever, for everybody. And I'm proud tonight that people are t doing a great job of expressing themselves and taking care of business. And saying that, I hope you folks on the council understand something. There are 2,000 people out behind me right now that are against this. And I have not, and nothing against the, the community, but you be, must be a good person, a good neighbor, and get along with people. And I've been picked on. I know I'm a little big, but I've been picked on when I was little. You know, you fight for what's right, and that's the way it is. And you're fighting in your way. You folks up here got to be thinking about it. Thank you. Are there really 2,000 people out there? Okay, so... We'll wait for that group to exit, but the next row, if you can come up, and we'll wait for the door to shut before we have you talk because we can't hear you otherwise. Yes. Hello, my name is Miss Maldonado, and I'm a resident of Kingsford. And I'm a working mother. I'm Hispanic. I got three kids, a husband and a dog. I have to come home. I have to work, wash dishes, clean. The last thing I want to do is be here. I mind my business, keep to myself. So having to come here for this is a little, little upsetting. Um, I would like to see the face of the person who thought this was a good idea, first of all. Thank you. Um, this isn't bringing unity. This is not bringing unity. I don't know how long you've been a council member, um, but it's not bringing unity. Um, 
not putting you down. You know, I, I, everybody chooses their careers, and we have to keep moving. As a Hispanic woman, I, 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 um, I would never put anybody down. But this is not bringing unity at all. You were better off buying a flag and putting up, putting it up in your home. You know, I have a cause. I'm pro-life. Can I put my pro-life flag up here? Can I go to, to the park and drop my pro-life flag everywhere? I, you know, I will offend somebody. And they will take my flag down. Now, I have my home. I could put up my flags. My neighbor, different. Um, we voted different. But we respect each other. We respect each other. You, that's when you do that. There's many charities. There's many ways of doing it. This was not a very good idea. You know, even in my house, there's division. I got five people and relatives. I'm the oldest of 55 grandchildren, okay? Oldest of 55 grandchildren, not to mention great-grandchildren. There, it's hard. We can't even order, decide what to eat for dinner sometimes. <laughs> but you know what we do? We vote on it. We vote on it and majority rules, right? It's fair because life, nothing in life is fair, but you do the best you can. I was raised to treat everybody with respect and love each other, but this is not bringing unity. This is not bringing unity. So this should have been maybe voted on. We have elections. You know, do it a different way and majority rules. But that's your answer right there. Look out that door. That's your answer. Thank you. Okay? Shame on you. Shame on you. Let's make sure um, that we are being respectful, please. Thank you. Hi, my name is, my name is John Palms. I'm a resident of, of Kingsburg. And um, thank you for letting us come and speak. To me, what I wanted to say is that I feel like um, every single one, who, every single person who lives here in our city has a place here, has a has a, a part to to offer, um, and needs to be respected, needs to be honored. And I just want to say, Ms. Hurtado, that I'm sorry to hear you know if people are mis are disrespecting you and dishonoring you. Um, to me, that's wrong. Um, at the same time, I feel like we've. The, God has a way for all of us to get together and, and us to work together. He's created that. And to me, that's what I want to see us doing. And when people are disrespected, we're not following that. At the same time, to me, I, I have to say that we can't celebrate something that, that goes against God. And that's not, that's, we can't be doing that. We can't celebrate that. So in that sense, I'm against, uh, I'm against the, uh, the proposal. But I really want to see us really honoring and respecting one another. That's my heart. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Britton Jennings. Um, I've lived here, pretty much gone through all the schools. Um, I'm a high school or freshman, um, and I wanted to thank you for doing this. I truly appreciate you. Um, being scared to be yourself is a tragedy, and it's something that the LGBTQ plus community have to deal with every single day. Nobody would ever choose to have a target on their heads for words and phrases like faggot, burn in hell, kill yourself, devil's creation. And yes, I, as well as others, have heard terrible, terrible words like this. Having this flag in, flag in Kingsburg would go against these hateful words that kids and adults face constantly. Kingsburg needs to be a place to support and represent all students and adults. And having a simple flag with simple colors is an amazing way to do that. Even if this doesn't get passed, I wanted, I want every teen and adult that are part of that are part of the LGBTQ plus community or an ally of this community to know that there are people in this town who love you, support you, and understand you. Thank you. Thank you. I recognize a lot of you. Um, my name is Annie Vargas Abernathy. I am a lifelong resident of Kingsburg. I attended Kings River Elementary and Kingsburg High School. And I want to share with you something that I read today that really struck me from Pastor Martin Niemöller at the Nuremberg Trials in 1945. First they came for the socialist and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionist and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. And then they came for the Jews and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak up. I have chosen to speak out today as an ally for the LBGTQ plus community 
because it is the right thing to do. I want to teach my children that when you see bigotry and injustice, you stand up and you speak up or there will be no one left to speak up for you. We are active members, my family, of the Catholic community. We participate in sports and other community activities. And I am reaching out to express my support for Pride Month. I believe that the struggle by the LGBTQ plus people is a struggle repeated by all minorities. Learning about the history of the oppression of these people have experience is vital in, in the first step in becoming a better ally. Unlearning biases is a long process. Continuous education is key. We need to make space for everyone at the table. Everyone has a story to share and everyone has a place at the table. We need to build bigger tables, not taller walls. By recognizing June as Pride Month, it is just one way of incorporating allyship into the daily lives of the Kingsburg community. This would be the first real step instead of virtual signal signaling. Hold others accountable and declare Kingsburg the best place in California to live for all people. Thank you for your time. Good evening, Mayor, members of the council. I work for a logistics company, so I wanted to uh, applaud you, Mayor, for your ability to move those groups in and out of those rows. Good job. Can Are you a resident also? I am. I'm a okay. resident of Kingsburg. I live on Hema Street. My wife is outside. Um, she's letting me do the talking. It's a rare <laughs> thing. But uh, she is a teacher in the community, and I work in Fresno, but we live here in Kingsburg. We moved here three years ago because of the unique and special character of this town. Uh, we love the life here that Kingsburg has to offer us and the emphasis on community and family values that we see here that's unique in the Central Valley in many ways. We believe that all people are created in the image of God and as such, everyone has value. Whether a person identifies as LGBTQ+, plus, uh, doesn't change that value or their right to live in peace and with dignity. We harbor no ill will towards anyone. At the same time, it must be said that we do not need to alter our town to create a public display based primarily upon how a person chooses to have sex, what they choose to call themselves, or how they prefer to dress. We must, why must the parents of Kingsburg be forced to explain to their young children why the town is covered in these displays for an entire month. Discussions of sexuality and gender norms are for parents and their children to be discussed at home, not to be forced upon us on Draper Street or the streets of this city. People have an individual freedom to live how they choose, but that should not be forced upon everyone else. The effort to create a Pride Month in Kingsburg is a direct assault on the values and structures that make this community great. It's not discriminatory to say no to hosting, to hosting rainbow flags down our public streets, nor does it make a person a bigot to say that they want people to make those things private and not public. For those who want to celebrate publicly, there are plenty of opportunities in Fresno, San Francisco, San Jose, and elsewhere in the state. It does not make me a bigot to say that this is not right for Kingsburg. I'm originally from New York, and I'll just tell you that if you allow this to happen, it will not end with pretty flags. You will soon have to consider the parades, the photos, and other displays that come with it, and some are lewd and inappropriate. You will usher in the erosion of the special character and unique quality of the gem of the valley. There's a large crowd of your constituents outside tonight, and they're listening on delay to these proceedings. And with full respect to every one of you and your offices, I want to tell you that you need to be on notice tonight that if the people of Kingsburg feel that you've gone against their wishes, your positions the next time that you go up for election will be challenged. And I say that with kindness and full respect. I thank want to you. thank you, sir, but um, we, 
because we do have that large crowd, we really need to stick to the two. That minutes. was it. I said thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. I've lost count of which row we're on. <laughs> okay. If you can, Chief's got it. If you can stand up here and then if you can wait until the door's shut because it's really hard for us to hear you if it's open. I think they're going to let the next group in. Did you bring any aspirin? There you take, take an aspirin. And if you can really pay attention to the alarm on here because I've heard we have 2,000 people possibly out there. I want to make sure everybody's voices are heard. So we need to really stick to that. Thank you. Go ahead. All right. Hi, my name is Katrina Bartell, and I'm a resident of Kingsburg. I just want to say that I oppose having any celebrations for anybody's sexuality. I believe sexuality is a private matter and should be kept that way. We in Kingsburg do not have a heterosexual pride parade, even though many of our residents believe that heterosexuality is what is true and right and even commanded by God. So I just don't see or understand why it's necessary to hold public celebrations for anyone's sexuality. Thank you. Thank you. Can we mute that phone? Yeah, who? OK. Hi, my name is Phil Bartell, and I'm a resident, and I'm here tonight because I live here. I was raised here. I'm raising my family here. I have four children, and uh, I oppose this. Uh, the reason I oppose it is because I don't believe that it's the city's job, and I don't believe that uh, yourselves as leaders of this community uh, should be determining the ideals that I'm teaching my, my children. Uh, that's for my wife and I to decide. And uh, this is not a matter of freedoms or liberties. Everybody has the right to live the way that they want. Uh, I, d I don't believe that we as a city need to be promoting uh, any, any one or the other of those. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. I have a little slight allergies. Um, OK. Uh, my name is Mary Ann Parks. And we moved here um, four years ago into the city here. And I really love the city. It's an awesome place to live. But um, I, along with the gentleman that just left, you know, I look around. I'm Hispanic. My husband's white. It has nothing to do with anything. I look at, out there, and I look at many people that look different and act different and have different values. And to me, I say, why is it that some special interest people want to make changes for everybody else because whether any of you here believe that it won't make a change in family and culture and everything else it does make a difference and to me that's why I agree I say you know, I disagree with with the flag and the pride month and I feel like you know there, it is it is wrong that somebody on the council or anybody on the council makes a decision for everybody in the community I feel we all are different, we all look different, we all act different, we all talk different. But it's okay, we all have to respect each other no matter what. And I oppose them having their flag or any other special thing happening in the city. Thank you. Hello, my name is Richard Halston. I'm a citizen of Kingsburg, I'm 63 years old. I've been here my whole life. Um, kind of nervous. I don't really want to be here. I have other things to do. Uh, but I see this as important. Uh, I agree with the gentleman and the lady that it is parents' responsibility to raise their children. It is my responsibility to raise my daughters, and I have raised my daughters. They became good kids here in Kingsburg. They went through the school system. Yes, they were bullied. But they made their choices, and they decided to make a choice and live straight, get married, and have children. And that's fine. And it's, you know, if somebody wants to fly a flag, fly your flag at home. Make your choices. I am happy to see, and yes, there is 2,000 people out there, and I'm happy to see that they are voicing their opinion, and they're voicing their opinion against this. Elections have consequences. And we could see that today, right now. 
just realize I'm, my prayers are with you guys right now because your decision has a lot of consequences. It's taken a long time, years, to build a community like Kingsburg. And one wrong choice can destroy it. My prayers are with you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is James Horstman. I'm a over 50 year resident of Kingsburg. Went all through elementary, grade school, uh, junior high, high school, and so forth. And I live here with my wife, two stepdaughters, and two grandkids. And this town is a jewel. It is an oasis in this valley. Trust me, it's, it's a wonderful place to live. And I believe this flag and what it stands for is a moral issue. And morality is best taught at home. That's not the city's job to teach that or endorse it. Because if it endorses this, it's got to endorse everything. And who knows what's coming next. But it won't be good, trust me. It won't. I'm opposed to it because I am a man of God and I believe in the Bible and the Bible says it's wrong. And I'm not up here to shake a Bible at you, not at all. I'm just saying those are God's words, not mine. And I'm, I'm very opposed to it and I just encourage you to vote that way and uh, I just appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. We'll wait for the, the group that spoke to exit, and then the next group can line up. And we'll wait for the door to shut so that we can make sure to hear you. Hi, Tamara. Hi. Uh, my name is Tamara Norris. I am a resident of Kingsburg for, uh, in my whole life, over 30 years. Um, I struggled coming today. I was scared, I'll be very honest. After 30 plus years living here, I've discovered that the cognitive dissonance within this community is real. And let me explain to you. I wonder if any of you have ever been told that your child and all others like your child should be rounded up and put into their own school, separate away from everybody else. I wonder, because I have, and it wasn't just a comment, it was a threat. When I clarified with this person that they were talking about segregation, right? The response was, yeah, just, yeah, straight up, yes. So I've heard a lot of people talk about the percentages of votes. They've taken surveys about how many people voted for or think against this pro and con. But I ask you to take those comments with a grain of salt because those surveys are not a true representation of our community. Those surveys were taken in groups where my child was threatened and others like them. So I ask you to think about that first with all of everything else you're going through. I also have heard a lot about people talking about um, so many different flags being flown. If we're going to just fly one more, why don't we, why don't we fly them all? I'm sorry. I want you to feel with me the irony that Sweden is regarded as the most progressive in Europe in the world for same-sex activity, which was legalized in 1944, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender rights. And if I'm not mistaken, we fly a Swedish flag, don't we? Maybe think about that. Thank you, Tom. Good 
Good evening, lovelies. Um, so I'm here tonight for in cahoots with everyone else who would love to fly that flag. Um, it's very important to a lot you, of people. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Can you state your name? I'm Zach, Zachary Howell. Mm-hmm. Many of you know me. You were my principal. I was very close friends with your daughter. <laughs> Love you. Um, <laughs> so for all of the people that are saying that if you're going to fly this one, you know, you're going to have to fly all of them. And that's not true. And I hope that they realize that. Um, because a lot of other things have to do with hate. This is literally in the name about pride and people being who they are. Um, It's very important to a large group of people in this community that that they have this representation, um, and I hope that you consider that in your decision. A lot of people have brought in religion into this, saying that it's against their religion that things like this are presented. And thankfully, there's such a thing as separation of church and state. So that really shouldn't be a factor in your decision making. Hopefully not. Um, It just, I'm Kingsburg born and raised, and it's getting increasingly more difficult to want to tell people that. And I just, I need that representation and that knowing that my town supports me the people who represent my town support me, and that I am also represented. So that is all I have to say on the matter. Thank you, and please put the flag up. Thank you, Zachary. Hello, my name's Hayden Gallier, and first off, it's pronounced LGBTQ plus community, so if you want an opinion, I'd suggest that you pronounce it right. And today I'm going to be talking about my experience as a bisexual woman. I was outed by people of this town and nothing was done. The flag represents me and many other people in this town and having what it represents would help me and others feel protected. Why is me loving who I want to love such a big problem? Is it because the Bible told you? Or is it because you can't stand the thought of people being happy? I've dealt with my share of name calling, hurtful comments, slurs such as faggot, kill yourself, your parents should have disowned you, and to that I say why. What's the point of these ugly words and does it make you feel better to put people down? If you don't want a pride flag, then why do you think that it would be okay to hang something other that represents something such as Christianity? Don't you think that's kind of hypocritical? Thank you for listening and I hope you choose to do the right thing and put the flag up. Thank you. Hi, my name is Bradley Taylor, and I live on 14th Avenue, and I've lived in Kingsburg my whole life, and I've just came here to say that I am in heavy support of the passing of this vote. I have been teased and joked about because I am gay all my life growing up here. I know that hanging a flag will not fix this issue at all, but and it won't change it, but it can help, and that... Sorry, it can help show that the city supports you. I think if a simple hanging of the flag is this big of a problem, my question is, what's the real problem here? Again, I would agree, this is not bringing unity, and that's confusing. But sadly, I know why it isn't. Again, look outside, and you'll find your answer. Thank you, Bradley. My name is Alan Smith. I just happened to drive by. I didn't know what was going on. Um, My mom grew up here with Rayford Johnson, went to high school. I raised three daughters here. I just came here to support Jewel. I want my daughters to be proud of growing up in Kingsburg, but I don't think they are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. After this front group shares, we're going to take a five-minute um, restroom break for the council. <laughs> so if we can have the front group come up. And after they speak, we're going to take a five-minute break. Hi, I'm Sue Collin, and I live in the 93631 zip code area, just out of town, but we have a business in town, my husband and I. And I just uh, look at 
the history of what our country was founded on from the Declaration of Independence, our Constitution, Bill of Rights, they were founded on certain principles that came based on the beliefs of the people who came here. So I think proclamations such as this that have been passed across the country have hurt our country, and I think this passed here would hurt our city. So I urge you to vote no. Thank you. what I wanted to write. Read Can you state your name and if you're a resident? Um, good evening. My name is Jacqueline Rogers and I am a resident and a business owner. Um, this was written by somebody and I just wanted to share it. It was very much written, I think, with respect um, and I just thought it was worth reading. So, um, Dear Mayor North and honorable members of the Kingsburg City Council, I oppose and respectfully request that you and the Kingsburg City Council members do not act on this proposed proclamation to declare June LGBTQ plus Pride Month in Kingsburg. All people are created equal in God's image, and Jesus commands us to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. We must all try to live peacefully with our neighbors. That fact is that proclamation supporting a specific group of people creates division. In our community, if the council wants to recognize Kingsburg citizens, it should do so based on character. Service to the community and merit. Characterizing and dividing people by sexual orientation, skin color, or other immutable characteristics does not unite us. It divides us. Literally, it also sets bad precedents. We must love our LGBTQ plus neighbors and recognize them for, for the proclamation and respectfully do not act on or support the proclamation. LGB, LGBTQ Pride Month of Kingsburg respectfully submitted, but we do not need this in our town. Um, I just, I don't want to recognize them basically sold on their identity. Um, and I think that that's what that's doing it by having the flag. So thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. My name is Dennis Gagnon. I am a resident here in Kingsburg. I want to thank you for being allowed to speak. My dad was a military veteran. I'm a veteran. We fought the freedom and democracy of this country under that flag. <clears throat> I'm going to save you guys all a big problem and save your jobs right now. If I remember right, it's we the people, for the people, by the people. You want this to go through, you put it to a vote for the people out there and let the whole city vote on it. If it goes, it goes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I don't think you guys have the right to pass this. That's not in your job description. You need to let it for the people out here. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Troy Tillman, resident of Kingsburg. I wasn't born and raised here, but I got here as quick as I could. <laughs> I'm from Western Monroe, Louisiana. My daddy was 26 years Marine Corps. He fought and bled under this flag, as did many of your family. We've all got family that have fought and died under this flag. I stand for it. I teach my children to stand for it. I don't teach them that we're different just because of your sexual orientation or the color of your skin or where you're from or who your mom and dad are. I try to raise them to look at everyone equally. I don't care what you do in your bedroom. I don't care what you do in your home. I care what my kids are being force fed in school and force fed that just like people have said before, that when we ride down these streets, we see all these different flags up and I have to explain to my 10 year old son what it stands for. When most of the time, I don't know what it stands for. <laughs> so. Think about it. We don't need any more division in this country, certainly not in this town. I love Kingsburg. I'm proud to be from here. My wife is born and raised here. That's her cousin sitting there, Mr. Palomar. And I'm proud of the family that they have here. They're registered Choctaw Indians. We have whites, Hispanics, Indian. We have all manner in our family, and we're all inclusive. 
if you come to our gatherings, you are included. It doesn't matter where you're from, what you believe. That's what we have to get back to in this country, in this town. We stand for this flag. We stand for the California Republic flag. I don't believe that we need another flag to divide us. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Hi, my name is Denver Silva, and I live in District 2, your district, Laura. And uh, I just wanted to come here and talk on behalf of the proclamation that was brought up by Councilwoman uh, Hurtado. And I'd just like to voice my opinion and say that I just hope that you guys listen to the people, and I urge that we, you guys vote no on this proclamation. Um, first off, you know, Councilwoman uh, Hurtado has her right for her sexuality, as do all of us here. And that's something that is her own opinion, and that can stay with her. And if we choose to put this flag up, you know, where does it go from there? What, what flag will be flown next? You know, there's really only one flag that supports all of us, and that's the flag that's standing right there behind you guys. Um, secondly, you know, Mr. Tato thinks that this is going to bring the community together, and I strongly urge that it's not. I mean, as we can see out what's going on out here, it's not bringing our community together. You guys are all representatives of this community. You guys were all voted in by the people. So I ask that you guys listen to the people and listen to their votes. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be taking a five minute break.
They said, well, what do you do? Anybody need some snacks? <laughs> I got this for you. I told you this one would eat right now. Chocolate. <laughs> I love chocolate. <laughs> no, never. I guess. I mean, my dad bears. Yeah. She had the chocolate on my floor. You know, I, she gave me some she chocolate. She doesn't like chocolate. You all hanging in there? Anybody need a snack? <laughs> Okay, we will continue with public comment. So we will what row did, we'll start at the back row. And if you can line up here, and if we can all remember um, to be respectful while we're making the comments, and you have two minutes, 
Um, I'm not sure how many more people we have outside to make comments, but we really want to stick to that. So if you can state your name and if you're a resident. Thank you. Thank you very much and good evening. My name is Matt Rogers. I am a resident of Kingsburg. My family has farmed in the Kingsburg area for four generations. I want to begin by commending Council Member Hurtado for her courage in bringing this forward and give her a hand. My faith in God is the foundation of my entire life. I am a church-going person, but I do have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And that faith teaches me that you love every single person, no matter who they are or who they choose to love. And some may ask, what is the significance of a flag? A flag outside this city hall representing LGBTQ plus Pride Month sends a message to the children, the teens, and the adults in this community who live in the shadows, who are embarrassed, who are afraid to be bullied, who are afraid to be physically attacked. It sends a message to them that they belong to and that this city affirms them and they're part of this city. Somebody mentioned, and by the way, there's not 2,000 people outside. I counted, tried to count. Um, <laughs> there's not. Um, somebody mentioned before, this is an organization, so we're going to put up other organizations' flags. This isn't an organization. This is a group of people, human beings. And they deserve uh, to be heard. And like I said, I believe this flag is an affirmation to those living in the shadows in fear. Some of them, we've heard some very tragic testimony tonight, um, that they belong here in Kingsburg. They don't have to leave. I've had friends who have left. And years from now, Council, I will just say that future generations will look to you and ask where you stood in this moment, and I ask you to stand on the right side of history and support this flag. Thank you. Thank you. I'm vaccinated. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Michael Brewer. I am a resident here in Kingsburg, and I cut out a lot of snark because we only got two minutes. So I would like to thank Mayor North, the City Council, and the community for coming out to discuss this unnecessarily hyped-up agenda issue. I mean, check it out. You have a live audience tonight. This has stirred up some good old-fashioned civic activism, right? This simple request has stirred up some really uncomfortable feelings within the community. According to over 800 comments on the local official unofficial town page, those feelings were mostly icky. I'm perplexed about it. I thought we were grown-ups living in 2021, not 1929. I tried to get a deeper understanding by asking what and why. This made a lot of people upset. Paraphrasing, I don't want this here. This is an agenda item. They're, they're, they're pushing their beliefs. Well, what is the this that we don't want here? What are the beliefs and what's the agenda? I received very few answers, but a lot of hostility. Apparently, we're all supposed to know the code and it's impolite to make people say what they really mean. And that's the point. Hostility and division is our default. It's our normal reaction to things that make us feel uncomfortable. Take a look around. We have outsiders because somebody asked, can we recognize the month of June as Pride Month in a show of support of our LGBTQ plus community? A citywide declaration recognizing the month of June as Pride Month is a start in flipping this divisive default. After all, I think we can all agree that bigotry cannot be the town's default. We should start these conversations about inclusion from the affirmative, not the negative, or at least have these conversations about inclusion. In light of some of the passion displayed on this matter, maybe Pride Month would be good for all of us. Get us talking about what it means to live respectfully of one another in shared sacred spaces. And I know some will argue, but it's not respectful to my religion. I refer them kindly to the First Amendment. And I remind them that the religion stops being the religion when they start forcing it on other people. If you feel City Hall is not appropriate for a flag, please designate another place. I think we can all try our hardest to find some middle ground. Regardless, please vote in favor of this proposal. Thank you. Thank you.
Hello, my name is India and I am a lifelong resident of Keensburg. I'm going to talk quick because I have a lot to say. Firstly, I love Keensburg, but never in my wildest dreams did I think something like this would be brought up at a city council meeting. So I want to take a moment to acknowledge Jewel Hurtado for her bravery and willingness to bring this topic to the table in Keensburg. I deeply, deeply appreciate you. It is your job to vote with love and respect for all of your citizens, including your LGBTQ plus community. I am speaking on behalf of those who were too afraid to come here today, and there were many. I hope you are all truly listening to those who are coming in, sharing their traumas, and realizing that each of you represent all of Kingsburg, not just your district, and all of Kingsburg includes the LGBTQ plus community. I hope that you know that if you vote against this proposal, you are hurting a community that is already at higher rates for self-harm, depression, and suicide. I agree with this proposal, and most other towns acknowledge Pride Month and we can join them. We are asking for the bare minimum of loving thy neighbor and everyone deserves to live authentically. I have family that are part of the LGBTQ plus community, cousins, two grandmas, and I am an ally. The LGBTQ plus community is about love and I know Kingsburg wants to love its citizens. There's nothing wrong with celebrating who you are, but there is something wrong with concealing identities you don't agree with. When I tell people I'm from Kingsburg, they know us as the Swedish town, but they could know us as an inclusive town that welcomes all of its citizens. You put that flag up to show the LGBTQ plus community that you welcome them. And those who don't like it don't have to look at it, but it is, means a lot more to the LGBT community when you put that flag up in support of them. So please, I urge you to vote yes for this proposal. Thank you. Thank you, India. Some of us have already began to be break the silence of the night, have found that the calling to speak is often a vocation of agony. However, we must speak. We must speak with all the humility that is appropriate to our limited vision, but we must speak. That is from Martin Luther King Jr. And that is why I'm here today. Can you Members, please state your name? I'm sorry. I apologize. My name is Stetler Brown. I'm a resident of the city of Kingsburg. And I'm addressing the council, um, and I want to applaud Councilwoman Hurtado's resolution that's making it available for pu public comment today. Um, she is braver than I am. Um, I can make a two-minute speech and then walk out the door and kind of brush off my shoulders, but she's the one that's carrying a lot of the burden. And so I acknowledge you um, as a Latina, as a woman in this area. So I'm here for you. I am here today for those who cannot speak for themselves, who are afraid, isolated, and fearful of backlash should they stand for themselves. I am here because I am a teacher who teaches public speaking, and I have told hundreds of students in my short teaching career that they can make a difference in the community and that they should. I am here for me because my own journey and experience is filled with depression, isolation, and rejection. Punting this opportunity when it comes to my own town and community is not an option, and I cannot let this time pass by. It, Pride Month means a lot to folks like me in the queer community. I never had the opportunity to live in the city that celebrated our history until graduate school. Prior to that, I felt isolated and alone and scared of what would happen if people in my community knew. I see this as an opportunity to confront homophobia as a city. It is a disease. Rejection of queer people happens on a daily basis. And I want to be able to walk down Draper Street with my partner holding hands without having to look around to see who's around. We are not going to fix homophobia with passing this resolution, but we are creating a treatment plan to be able to fix it and kick it out of this city. Hate is not welcome here, and I stand for those who feel alone today in the audience or watching online, that they are seen, they are heard, and more than anything, that they are loved. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Victoria Rosales, and I'm a resident of Kingsburg. I heard a man speak earlier who said that he loved Kingsburg because of the way that it made them feel. I'm here today to show my support for the LGBTQ plus community and the proposed proclamation in the hope that one day all Kingsburg citizens can feel the same way. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll have the next group come up and if we have any others coming in. 
And we'll wait for the door to shut. Hi, Vernon. Hi, Laura. You just tell me when. Okay. I'm Vernon Peterson, fourth generation Kingsburg farmer. Kingsburg's a real special place. A lot of us have spent a long time building this place. Building is really hard. Building takes a lot of work. Tearing down is real easy. It's real easy to tear something down. Uh, I would hope that you would be part of building and maintaining this special place. This proposal will be a very negative impact on our town. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Michael F. and I am not a resident of Kingsburg, but I do see an issue that has come to the attention of this community. And I know the reputation of this community with family, attending church here, patronizing your businesses here. And I see a controversial issue brought by a group that knows it's controversial under a banner of Unite and rally around us. So what I would challenge is that group to come back and formulate to address the bigger problem that they're identifying, which is bullying. I would ask Ms. Hurtado to rally around a flag of anti-bullying that represents the young lady whose clothes may not be branded appropriately and is getting bullied. I would ask you to rally around the young man whose skin color might cause him to be bullied as well, but not parade around somebody's sexual activity choice in front of a community. I am Hispanic and I oppose this um, initiative that you guys have placed here um, and I just echo everything that Mike F. just said. Thank you. Hello, my name is Anais Serrano and I'm actually a resident of the city of Reedley. Um, I come here today in favor of um, a proclamation for the LGBT community because I feel like it's, a, it's something to spark a conversation. I actually talked to someone outside who was on the opposing, opposing view, and we had a very nice conversation. Her name is Andrea. And she asked me, she was like, why, do you, why are you in favor of this? I'm a member of the LGBT community, and for ten, I'm, I'm 25 years old now. 15 years it took me to realize and to accept myself for who I am. And I'm looking outside, and I'm seeing these kids, these young adults, who are finally getting the chance to say, you know what, I'm out and I'm proud. And, and I genuinely believe that a proclamation, something to celebrate them for the month, it's one month out of, the, out of 12. It's not that big of a deal for you guys to say it's one month, right? Um, for them, I feel like it's something, that, it's something special. It's something that they can feel, they can be seen, they can be heard. Um, when I was talking to Andrea, she told me that she loves everyone, right? And that's what I continuously keep hearing of, of the folks that are up here and speaking. And she said that if she didn't, um, speak tonight, tonight, or if she didn't come support, then you know what was she doing? And I felt the same thing. I was like, you know what? I'm here to support my community, and I'm here to support Joe Hurtado. And let me tell you guys something right now: that having one uh, one month, you know, being able to celebrate can spark a conversation, can spark something, just spark an understanding. Like we're not here to push our so-called agenda on other people. We're not here to push our sexuality on other people. We're here to spark a conversation and start bridging that gap between folks that are religious and our community. Because I never understand why they continuously feel that us being out, us speaking, us having an event automatically attacks their, their religion, right? And so just, just have that conversation, have that, you know, being able to spark it. I told her if I wasn't here, I wouldn't have been able to talk to her and I wouldn't have been able to hear her and she wouldn't have been able to hear me. And we sparked a conversation, we sparked a friendship. And I, I'm glad to say that her and I exchanged numbers and we're going to be able to talk for, you know, years to come and try to be able to understand each other. And hopefully you guys can do that here too and hopefully it reaches out in other smaller communities like in Reedley where we can have that conversation with others. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Terry Hillbloom, a resident of Kingsford. Uh, as I've been listening to all of this, it seems like it's really get into a, I'm against LGBTs and, and so forth, and the other side is I'm all for them and we have rights and so forth. Uh, a couple comments. First of all, I think as far as rights go, uh, the proper place for those to be settled is in the judiciary, not in a town council. Uh, there's also another 
group of us that have rights that we find founded in the Constitution and the Bible. And certainly those rights should not be overcome by a smaller minority. But as I see the, for the purpose today is not the argument between L, the LGBT and, and the others that oppose this uh, proposed action. It's really an argument of do we want to overtly promote that agenda? Just because someone's against having a parade or against any sort of um, motion to carry things forward doesn't mean they're against the people behind them. We, we encounter things every day where we, do, we choose to not overtly participate and push an agenda. But that doesn't mean we are against the other people personally. It's not a personal thing. And I think from what I've observed, we're losing sight of that in this, in this discussion. The question is, does the community of Kingsburg want to overtly promote their agenda? And I think that the uh, message should be very clear by now. And it doesn't mean that any of us are against what they are for. It means we don't want to be a flagship leader in promoting that agenda coming from this community built on very conservative values and have more churches than bars. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I ate plenty. I ate a lot before. I'm on the, I'm, I'm trying not okay, to if we can off. have the next group just line I'm up. Not eating from stress. Not good, no. Hi, Laura. Hi. <laughs> so, I'm Caitlin Chavazian, and my senior year was 2020. And so it got cut short. And so most of the people out there, I grew up with them in the school system. And one thing that my boyfriend and I like to do is we like to drive around at night. We love going around this town and being able to see all the different things. And I feel like if we put up pride flags, that's just going to ruin an experience for us because, you know, we love driving around and we don't want to see flags everywhere we go. Don't get me wrong, I have a family member who's lesbian and is married to a woman, and we love her to death. But still, it's our town. We're so prideful of the people that come and are able to see the Swedish flags and see our heritage, and we don't want something ruined by having these flags put up everywhere. So I just wanted you guys to take that into account that we want to be prideful of our town, but we want to be our own. So thank you. Thank you, Kaylin. Hello. Um, my name is Rihanna Callahan. I'm a resident of Reedley. And um, my mom grew up in Kingsburg and is has been a Kingsburg resident. But when she was going to have me, she wanted to move because she did not want her daughter to be a part of what she viewed as a hateful community. I stand here today to support this issue, and I thank you so much for your courage in coming forward and doing this. The LGBTQ flag is to honor the historical fighting that has taken to stand here and be able to say that I identify as a bisexual one, and your ability to hang that flag during the month of June is to show support to the community within Kingsburg, to your neighboring towns, to people across the world, to everyone, because our community is not by borders, it's not just within Kingsburg, it is everywhere. And to show unity within that. Flags are a symbol to honor. I do not view this as divisive, I view this as a chance to show support to those who are part of the community, that they are valid, to the kids who question themselves, to the kids who feel like they are scared to come out to their family, to their friends. And I feel like that's the most important thing. Thank you. Thank you.
Hello, my name is Allison Botello and I'm a resident of um, Dainuba. So, LGBTQ Pride Month is not meant to create diversity, but to bring awareness. Growing up gay in a primarily straight world is isolated, isolating, and I have suffered the mental tolls that come with it. If I had grown up seeing my community supporting me, then maybe I wouldn't have tried taking my life twice. Maybe I wouldn't have to depend on antidepressants to function every single day. I am somebody's daughter. I'm somebody's granddaughter. My parents did not have me expecting me to be gay, but I am here. And whether or not you vote yes or no, I'm still gonna be here. They're all still gonna be here. And we're gonna still continue to fight for our basic human rights. I speak for the youth that is growing up in a primarily heteronormative world. And I encourage you to vote yes for this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mark Morales. I'm a resident of Kingsford almost a decade now. Um, I'm just here to say that I don't think I'm proposed, but I'm not against the LGBT community. Um, I have relatives that are gay. Um, I have a stepdaughter who just acknowledged and told us that she was a lesbian. We still love her. I still love my family members because we, we are people. We are human. Um, and I think that's we don't need a flag. And I'm, I feel sorry for the young lady here who is in tears. But <clears throat> be aware that it's not all the community that there are people that are going to hate you. And I, I, I'm sorry for that. Um, but there are people that love you. And we need to show them that we love them. We don't need a flag to show love. The only flags we need are the ones that are here. Our American flag, because we're all U.S. citizens, we're all California citizens, and I love our community, and I know our community is not a hateful community. Keegan is a community of love, and we see it, we show it by just all the events we have here. We all hang out here, and, and I think we need to just show the love, not by a flag. We don't need another flag. Um, I, I have children, and I don't think, I don't have to want to explain what that flag means, because it's a personal and moral issue. And that's up to everybody on to teach their children what that flag means in their own household, not what it means for everybody else. So uh, that's and that's what I'm here for. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Albert. Good evening, um, Albert Rosales, resident of Kingsburg, um, in District One. I think my whole purpose up here is to kind of just question the reason why we're here. Um, being a resident of District 1, I'm questioning whether this is really even a necessary thing that our community needs. I've heard of a lot of things outside, inside. Um, you know, just I'll give, I'll give you a quick background on myself. I've uh, worked in mental health for the last 12 years, I've worked with children, at least for the last 20. Um, so I've seen both sides of the story. Um, I've also worked in youth ministry here in the, in the community as well. Um, done a lot of volunteer work here in town as well. Um, so my heart definitely goes out to uh, people like this young lady who have gone through gut-wrenching things, um, and I've worked with people to go get through the blocks that they've had. I think what we need to look at, though, is the message is being sent that this is not a divisive thing. I think that's inaccurate if you just look outside and if you look throughout not just this community, throughout the state, throughout the nation, um, this can be a very, very divisive topic and I think it needs to be treaded on very, very carefully. Uh, and I believe there was a gentleman that spoke earlier that I think hit the nail on the head. I think we need to look at this in a different aspect. I think we need to look at it in maybe a smaller context. Um, this might not be something that the city council should be even addressing. I think uh, putting this to a vote in town would probably be more accurate. Um, but I think it also needs to be done very delicately, um, very genuinely, um, and just I, I just don't think this is the way to go about it. Like I said, having worked with people in mental health, um, it's tough to put someone in the limelight when they are struggling to go through things in an emotional state. So I just want you guys to consider that as you vote. Thank you. Baby, while she talks. <laughs> I know 
I want to hold her. Hi there and good afternoon. My name is Jasmine Scoggins and um, I am a resident of Kingsburg and um, I've sent a few of you emails so I'm hoping you can put the face with that email. My district member is Brandon Purcell. It's very nice to meet you. Um, and I am here because um, my husband, I'm, I'm not a resident of Kingsburg. Um, I'm sorry, not a resident. I wasn't born in Kingsburg. I am from Bakersfield, and I had the opportunity to move to Kingsburg when I married my husband, Kalen Scoggins. He's not here today. He's working, of course. And um, when my husband and I were getting married, he was asking me, where do you want to live? And I said, well, I live, I'm from Bakersfield. You know, it's a bigger city. Kingsburg is small. And he's like, no, our children have to grow up in Kingsburg. And I said, why is that? I said, be, he said, because it is a nice town, it is a safe town, it is a conservative town. And that's why we chose to move here in Kingsburg and live here in Kingsburg. And my husband and I are opposed to this measure because, um, because of our faith. Um, there's some things that we just don't approve of. We're not trying to stop anybody from being who they are or telling them who not to not be themselves. Um, but we, it's something that we just, it's not something that we practice in our home. And um, we are asking our council member to please oppose it. So um, I just want to thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Judy Smith. I am a resident of Kingsburg. I am born and raised. Um, I am a young mother raising my kids here. And I love this town. I think it's a very safe town. And I'm very proud of my community. I, I, I just don't think this flag is very appropriate for a town, for our town. It's a flag that represents who you're sexually attracted to and I just don't think that is a very appropriate thing for our kids to be seen when we're walking downtown to explain that to them. I think it's a very adult subject and it shouldn't be paraded around for us to have to explain to our little children an adult subject that should be kept to adults. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, that's my baby. <laughs> that's my daughter. Hi, my name is Emerald Scoggins. I was uh, born and raised in Kingsburg also. I also am a Christian, and um, I come from a very, very dark past. I have uh, lived um, a lot of different ways, and I've come across a lot of people. My uh, nephew is actually um, homosexual, and I love him to death, but I do not agree with the way he lives. And that doesn't mean I dislike him. I don't, I, I don't love him. Just because I don't agree with it doesn't mean I hate it. Just because I don't agree with it doesn't mean I'm a bigot or a racist or everything else the news likes to say if you oppose their agenda. That little baby back there is my granddaughter, and I don't want her being indoctrinated because that is what's really going on here. The media is indoctrinating our kids. The Hollywood is indoctrinating our kids. Everybody's indoctrinating our kids, and the only person that needs to indoctrinate my babies is me and my kids. The, and the, um, my grandbabies don't need to grow up wanting to know, what does that rainbow flag mean? Well, let me tell you what that rainbow flag really means. That rainbow is a promise from God that got stolen from us by another group that says it's theirs. That rainbow represents the promise of God that he was never going to flood this world again. My Bible, my beliefs, I believe homosexuality is abomination. That doesn't mean that I hate homosexuals. That means I do not want it pushed down my baby's throat. So I am opposed. That doesn't mean I dislike homosexuals. They can live however they want. I'm very respectful of them, very kind to them. But they need to keep it in their bedroom just like I keep it in my bedroom. And that's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you. Woo, what a night, huh? So uh, I'm Matt Workman. I'm a born and raised here in Kingsburg. And, uh, I, you know, I sent an email to, first of all, I want to say that, you know, some outside influences have come here, and, and this is, uh, I think this, this really needs to be with the residents of, of Kingsburg, and I think they've pretty much spoken. Uh, There's a huge turnout outside. I mean, it's pretty pretty awesome to see. Um. So I wrote an email, and I just kind of want to read in person what I wrote. So the city of Kingsburg is a small, safe, and quiet town 
that seems to keep out of the limelight. I believe these attributes are attractive qualities that most of our residents enjoy. For this reason, I would like to offer my express opposition to this outlandish proposal. There is no need to align our city with any controversial ideals. Furthermore, we would only create a larger divide between the city and its citizens and among the residents themselves. So that's how I feel. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Matt Hagen, and I have been a resident of Kingsburg for most of my life since I was probably four years old. I guess all I want to say is uh, we, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. That preamble is why government exists. It's why you guys sit in your seats right now, both big and small. It is why we function as a society. It is why the society exists. And I guess what I wanted to say tonight, I wasn't originally planning to speak. I'm not even sure whether or not I should vote yay or nay on this, to be honest. But what I wanted to say is whatever you decide, whatever reasons you have to vote yay or nay on a matter, just know that decision, it will have weight. It will have consequences. It will have effects. The fact that there is a crowd gathered outside this building right now is evident of that. And my wish, my hope, tonight, when you guys vote, when you guys make your decision, is that you keep that reason for government existence in your mind and let it guide your thoughts, let it guide your actions in this manner tonight. And I pray that when you guys vote, it is for the right reasons. It is for those reasons of preserving that society, of preserving the general welfare of our public ensuring the domestic tranquility. That is something that I have heard very little of tonight, but it is such a central tenet to why our government, to why we exist as a society, and I pray you keep that in mind tonight as you vote. That is all I wanted to say. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello, my name is Aaron Brady. I live in District 1. Um, I just wanted to say uh, that I commend you on the courage that you had to bring this topic forward. Um, my personal experience is that um, my oldest sibling is a transsexual that lived in Kingsburg until my mom didn't think it was safe for her to live here anymore. And so that having been said, the way that things were when I was in second grade towards homosexuality and the, and the homophobics that lived here versus the way that it is now, it's, a totally, di it's totally different. You know, it's, it's way more diverse and you have more of an opportunity to speak and to, and to be out loud about that. And it's more socially acceptable than it was then. So I understand, you know, where you're coming from and wanting to have and wanting to have a flag. However, my personal opinion is it's, it's not a good use of, of the city time to be discussing matters about having a flag that is essentially about what your sexual orientation is. It's not, it's a waste of time. I had concern whenever they whenever I found out that such a young person was going to be on the city board I thought well that's a great thing now I have now I have my concerns about it you know I, I think that you made an emotional decision to bring a topic to light that should be addressed at the local and school levels where counselors can deal with it and they can help children that need help that feel different you know the society that we live in it's so much more diverse than it was 20 or 30 years ago this is something that wouldn't even have been able to talk about 30 years ago but I'm opposed to having a pride flag on the city hall building. That has nothing to do with our city. That has nothing to do with our city. That's a personal decision, which I respect, and I encourage people that need help or that want to talk to other people to talk to other people about. That's great. That's fantastic. I also say thank you for bringing such a touchy topic to light and for, able, for being able to have this discussion not in a hostile environment. You know, I hope that this, that this culture's people to have conversations about all this in a safe and healthy way. 
so that we don't have to feel divided, but we can feel together because of what's happened. So thank you for your time. Thank you for letting me speak. Thank you. My name is Dylan George. I'm a resident of Kingsburg. I oppose this. Um, I think that it'd be wise to call a spade a spade in the situation. Jewel, I think you have ambition way beyond Kingsburg, and your motivation is not because you're gay. That might be true. I think you're going to use this as a stepping stone to try to chase a political career somewhere else. And I think a lot of people outside think the same thing, and that's what I think about this situation isn't about a flag, that you're trying to use this for ambition that you have. And so you guys, the city councilors, I hope that you have wisdom to say, do you want to go on this wild ride? All these people outside right now, because of something I feel is alternative to a flag. So like somebody else said earlier today, you're going to open up Pandora's box. If you say yes to this, then it's game over for Kingsburg. And for everybody outside, if you don't like what's going on in this town and you're upset, it's time that we step up. And when people are up for election, that you actually put your money where your mouth is. Because if we didn't allow this to be a problem, it wouldn't be a problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for uh, listening to everybody tonight. I know it's a long night. And uh, appreciate you bringing this topic to the city of Kingsburg. And uh, I think it's a good opportunity for everybody to kind of search their own hearts and souls on, on how they treat people. Um, as far as uh, the flag is concerned, uh, you say that it'll bring unity and uh, allow people of Kingsburg to recognize uh, Gay Pride Month, which America already does that uh, in the month of June. Uh, for me, the only unity we need as a people and citizens of America is that American flag. I'm happy to fly the California flag since we're all Californians, and I'm more than happy to fly the Swedish flag even though I'm not Swedish because I believe in heritage, and the heritage of our city is strong. Um, you know, the, the rights of gay individuals are covered under that American flag as well. And so I don't know why we need another flag to recognize that. And I don't really see what good that will do um, in terms of making kids feel more accepted. You know, I've got four daughters and I've found out that girls are mean. I've got a son that is very kind, but boys are mean. And there's a lot of trials and temptations that go on through life living a, uh, as a young person in any kind of school situation. And maybe that's where our church on every corner has failed our youth. We haven't been able to walk alongside of them close enough. Um, and so I think that this maybe is a matter that needs to be dealt with at the school level with uh, more counselors and more people in these, in these children's lives, making them feel accepted for who they are. And uh, in my opinion, directing them to... Uh, their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, but that is my opinion, and so I appreciate you guys hearing me. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm? Sir, what was your name? I'm sorry, Greg Jackson, and I'm a citizen of Kingsburg. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Kingsburg. Hey, my name is Alex. Um, I'm a very good friend. I'm a mentor, and I'm also just someone who has a lot of love for a lot of folks here in this town. Um, and I'm someone who lives in a county area, not Kingsburg specifically, but I got a love for our county areas. And I just want to make sure that I'm, I'm here, one, to support my friend, and I hope that all of you understand on this council just how taxing this is on people, and especially folks who this is personally impacting. You know, I think it's funny that oftentimes, you know, as a, as a bisexual woman, how many times I've been called a snowflake. But as far as I can see, I see a whole lot of snowflakes who are making a whole lot of fuss about a flag. A flag and recognizing people who are in your community. You know, Kingsburg, there are gay people here. <laughs> whether people want to admit it or not, and whether you want to love them or not, gay people are here in your town, and they love you too. As much hate is being spewed toward them and spewed toward this community unnecessarily, they still love you. And I think that's something that all of you, I hope, can really remember tonight. That as much hate is as being brought on here, supposedly in the name of God, even though there's plenty of churches that accept gay people. Plenty of them. Plenty. 
I'm sorry, I don't know when all of a sudden being a Christian meant that you had to, <laughs> that you had to outright come and talk about your family's sexuality in public comments and then proceed to say how you don't agree with it. What, what kind of love and faith is that? I'm sorry, but that, <laughs> what good does that do for a city? People are coming towards you telling you that this is what is best for a city, but I'm sorry, all I'm seeing is a lot of hate. I'm seeing a lot of hatred for something extreme. Like, it's a flag, y'all. It's a flag that almost every other city and place is flying. You know, and if you're that worried about your children being gay, then, you know, it can happen. I mean, damn, would it be the worst thing in the world? I'm bisexual, I'm proud, and I hope that all of you can put love first tonight because there are gay children in your town that are watching this meeting right now. And they want to know who is safe to be around, who is safe to come out to, and if it's even safe for them to live in the city. Choose love. Thank you. Hi, Crystal. Hi, everybody. Don't start my call. My name is Crystal Ingrao. I am a resident of Kingsburg. I'm a new resident of District 2. Um, I used to be in Palomar's district. I want to start things off by saying I've listened to the entire thing tonight. I was at baseball, and then I was at soft, uh, basketball. You've taken a lot of heat. I have to give it to you. I really, really do. It's not all warranted, but you've taken a lot of heat, and I admire it. I'm glad that the community, the LGBT community, has somebody like you to speak for them. Now, I'm against the flag, but I'm not against the flag because I'm against gay people. I have family that's gay. I have close friends that are gay. Um, I'm just against what I feel it represents a divide in the city. Um, I'm going to read stuff because I get really nervous, believe it or not. <laughs> I don't believe that it has anything to do with religion. I don't believe that it was a choice. I believe that they were born this way and they should be represented and they should feel welcome in the city. I um, wish a flag flying on a government building wasn't what made them feel welcome. I wish they could feel welcome walking down the city streets. I wish the proposal included bringing in the city uh, businesses selling merchandise that were pride. I carry around a pride, a rainbow cup in June. I put my flag up on my profile picture on Facebook that represents that I am accepting of all gay community. I have children that haven't been super accepting at times. Um, I've used it as a learning experience. Um, I moved here in Kingsburg. I'm not originally from here because of the values that the Kingsburg had. I don't feel putting a flag out front is a representation of the council accepting the LGBTQ community. I think there's other ways to do that. I think that there's boost at the things that we have here. Oh my gosh, already? Well, I'm opposed to the flag. I appreciate you and I appreciate all of you. I appreciate everything you've done and everything everybody else has done. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Abby. <laughs> we love our city clerk. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Eli Maka. I'm in District 2. We moved here about a year ago. Uh, I work here. I uh, go to church here. Um, I love Kingsburg. It's a, it's a great town. My first uh, job in college was as an intern at the city of Costa Mesa in the city clerk's office. And so we would have council meetings that went to 11 at night often, some that went to 1 at night. So hopefully it won't be this bad. Tonight. <laughs> um, I want, as a Christian, to clarify what I think is the Christian message. Um, we hear a lot of, we need to separate church and state, we need to get religion out of government. I think that that is not what the founders intended, um, if you, if, if, by what a lot of people mean. When uh, we say that, we could say, let's get secularism out of government. If you look at church history, the popes and the, the Christian church would try to over-influence government, and that was a bad thing. It's a good thing to have separation, but to say you can't use the Bible, you can't use uh, religion as an argument for something is not what the founders had in mind. Um, so many Bible believers have come tonight and say their case that they're in opposition and we get called bigots and they say, choose love. You're not representing who Jesus is. And I understand that that's really confusing. Um, if you read the Bible, 
what does God say? He says that he is love and he gets to define what love is. And he knows what makes humans flourish. And he told women at times, he would say, go and sin no more. And there is a time and a place to call for repentance. There's a time to love and affirm. I love the LGBTQ community. My uh, brother uh, ended up with a woman who was in a lesbian relationship. And it, it's just, it's, it's, um, I love them and I want to show that love. But it's something entirely different to celebrate and affirm it as a city government. And I do worry about that. One of the previous people said, would it be the worst thing in the world to have one of your children become gay? And that depends. I would love them, absolutely. But to love and affirm them, we could love and affirm them, we could celebrate them, applaud them, all the way to eternal punishment. And that is what I believe, that's what Christians believe. So we think we're doing it out of love. I understand if you don't get that. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Josh Fulfer. I am not a Kingsburg resident. I actually live in Clovis, but I do travel through Kingsburg quite a bit for work. And um, when I heard this was going on, I actually document a lot of things that are going on right now. And if you guys look at what happens when cities do this, how this is just the start, and someone said earlier, Pandora's box, that's exactly what you're opening up here. Um, right now in Fresno, you have a church that's being protested by the LGBT on every Sunday morning and suing them because they don't want a church there. And it's an anti-God group that are out there with signs that say abort Jesus. Um, aren't you too old to believe in God? And as I see this and I travel and I see different communities that go and vote for this, your community has spoken really loud. They are out there in full force. And, and even because everybody that's called them bigots tonight, everybody that's calling them every name in the book, um, they still stood their ground. And they're standing, again, what everybody says, we have a flag. It's, it's the American flag. People have died for this flag. It represents all of us. And if we start this with one group needs this, then we're going to have to have a, a brown pride flag. And then we're going to have to have this. It ends at nothing, and I truly believe this is the beginning to the end. And uh, not being one of your constituents, but I'm just asking you, listen to your community. They have spoken loud and clear. Um, they're actually using uh, God's promise as their flag. The rainbow is God's promise. It's not something for sexuality. We shouldn't know who you sleep with at night. You shouldn't know who, what my sexual preference is. It's nothing we need to go parade around. Um, this is a lot bigger than just Kingsburg when you think about it. And I hope you guys truly make the right decision. And I thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Are we done with inside? Yeah. So now we need to open it up to um, phones. I will go over a few things again. Anyone who is wishing to speak on the phone line, make sure that um, the rest of you are on mute so that we can hear one person at a time. You don't speak over each other, and you will have two minutes. Um, we have the timer here on TV. I don't know if you're watching it online, but we will make sure that you can hear when the timer goes off. We are also going to make sure that um, all of the comments are respectful. Um, if they are not respectful, we will move on to the next caller. <clears throat> Yeah, we will mute it if you're not being respectful. So is there anyone that has called in that would like to make a public comment? Are you a resident of Kingsburg? Christian and I stand for the beliefs of God, beliefs of the Lord, and um, 
I just want to say that we are not against LGBTQ. Um, we love everybody. We, we welcome gays. We love, we love the person, but we hate the sin. So I just want to say that I oppose on this behalf. I mean, you guys are opening the door to something way bigger than what King Gray is. And, um, I just want to say that um, thank you for the time for letting us speak. And I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anyone else on the line? Yes, go ahead and state your name and if you're a resident of Kingsburg. Yes, I'm a resident of Kingsburg. Um, my name is, oh, I'm not going to say my name. Um, I'm a trans woman and I work in Kingsburg and I've been working there for, I think I would say three years now and I'm, and I'm definitely, definitely scared of people um, knowing that uh, I'm trans. I, I'm very self at my workplace and it scares me when I see people who are like on the opposing side um who like I am for this flag and it it represents so much more than just like a month and I am definitely terrified of going into work because uh, maybe one day like some person is going to find out that I am a trans woman of color and they're going to enact violence on me just for being myself Thank you. Do we have anyone else on the line? Hello? 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 Hi, can you hear me? Hello? State your name. State your name, and if you're a resident of Kingsburg, and one at a time, please. Thank you. Next caller. Please state your name and if you're a resident. Yes. Thank you. Next caller, please state your name and if you are a resident of Kingsburg. Uh, hello? Please state your name and if you're a resident of Kingsburg. Uh, hi, my name is Apollo Soto and I'm a resident of Kingsburg. Sorry, this is crazy. <laughs> we can hear you.
Thank you. Is there anyone else on the line? If you can state your name and if you're a resident of Kingsburg. Yes. Advocating for the LGBTQ plus community. And Is there anyone else? Oh, on the line? Anyone else that is not speaking, please mute your Facebook. Go ahead and continue. You were commending um, Council Member Hurtado. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to commend Joel for her bravery and for her strength and for, most of all, being a good human. Um, you know, a lot of people tonight have cited unity. Do you have your Facebook on? If you could mute it, it's in the background. It's difficult to hear you. I don't. I don't. I don't. Oh, okay. Someone else. Sorry. Um, but uh, I guess going on, um, a lot of people tonight have cited unity, but I'd be willing to bet that the only time that they've actually unified is here tonight to spout hateful rhetoric and divisiveness under the guise of what they call unity. So someone tonight said, let's call it fate of the state, so let's do that. The only reason people are upset is because they don't believe that one person should have the autonomy to love whoever they want to love and be whoever they want to be. Jewel, for every person that has something negative to say tonight, there's so much more of us out here that support you, support the LGBTQ plus community, and regardless of what this council decides, Joe, I hope you never stop fighting the good fight. You're appreciated and you are loved. Thank you. Do we have any other comments on the phone? Yes, Hi, I'm my name is. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. State your name and if you're a resident of Kingsburg, please. My name Hi, is my Jennifer Cruz. Oh, go ahead, Ashley. Hi. Hi, my name is Ashley Turner. I am a resident of Kingsburg and I oppose this proclamation. Thank you. Do we have another person on the line? If so, state your name and if you're a resident of Kingsburg. Hello, yes, my hi. name is Jennifer Cruz and I am not a resident of Kingsburg, but I have good friends in your city and I want to thank Council Member Hurtado for this proposal. Uh, a rainbow flag doesn't turn straight people gay uh, and it doesn't put LGBTQ views on anyone. Furthermore, opposing proclamation and a rainbow flag flying in your city doesn't eliminate the LGBTQ population from your city. What it would do is signal that the city leaders believe in equality for this historically marginalized community. Estimates of LGBTQ people in any population are 10 percent, so in Kingsburg that's 850 adults and 350 youth. Um, these folks deserve to feel safe, welcome, and equal in their city and their home. The Central Valley Police makes strides in equity and inclusion, and in Kingsburg, a city proclamation is an important step for you leaders to take to protect your citizens and support equality. Most importantly, recognition, acknowledgement, and support of equal rights is suicide prevention, especially for the 350 queer young people living in your city. When you consider your decision, ask yourself if voting against this pride proclamation is worth even one of those young people feeling unworthy of being there in Kingsburg. And given the opposition we've heard here tonight, I would say it is your duty as leaders to support all of your citizens by proclaiming June Pride Month in Kingsburg. Thank you. Thank you. For the next caller, please state your name and if you're a resident of Kingsburg. And please speak loudly into the phone. It's a little difficult to hear you. Hello, my name is Lisa. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Hi, uh, my name is Lisa, and I've heard a lot, um, and I'm a resident of Kingsburg, and um, I've heard a lot of, of the comments tonight and, and how, how they are, the LGBTQ community is uh, afraid and how they have so much fear and how they're, they're they feel like they're hated, but um, they, I believe that their needs there's something beyond this. I believe that there needs to be 
counseling, mental health, because there's a lot of them who want to commit suicide. And I just want you to know that the Lord does love you. We don't hate you. We just feel like if you open the door to hanging this flag at the city council, that it's going to open a lot of doors to many other things. And if, if you guys want to hang that flag for one month, then I agree with the gentleman who said in December, let's hang, you know, he, he was born for, you know, Christianity and on, you know, Easter, let's, let's put the flag up there for he is risen, you know? And so I just want to oppose this. And, you know, I just want to say that there's, there's help out there for people who feel like they're being threatened, who, who are still suicidal. Um, it's much more than just this flag, and that flag represents God's promise. So I just want to say that I oppose this. Thank you. Thank you. And if there's another caller, please state your name, and if you're a resident of Kingsburg. Hi, my name is Brandy, and I am a resident of Kingsburg. And I would just like to say that I am for the flag. And even being a Catholic woman, I don't think that this will separate our community. I think that it'll bring us closer, if anything, and I am for it. So thank you, Joel, for bringing this forward. Thank you. Do we have anyone else on the line? If so, please state your name and if you're a resident in Kingsburg. Yeah, I'm right there. Yeah. I'd like to say that, Jewel, I, I, I appreciate your your uh, spirit and your, your energy. You know, I, I love it. I love seeing all your posts on your on your child on Facebook. You went to high school with my my children, and uh, I am your neighbor. However, uh, we we don't. This is. Just like when you opposed our neighbor's flag on uh, pro Trump flag on his yard, uh, this is a flag that shouldn't be on a government building. Uh, if you want to fly it in your front of your house, uh, so be it. We respect that. We respect you. We respect your sexuality. This is not something that needs to be on a government building. Thank you. Thank you. Please state your name and if you're a resident of Kingsburg. My name is Craig Griffin. And I am a resident of Kingsburg. And uh, I'm just uh, really disappointed on the way the, the city uh, proclaimed themselves. Um, and I just uh, really wish people would read the Bible and... Uh, understand the way the God's word has been presented. Thank you. Thank you. Please state your name and if you're a resident of Kingsburg. Yes, my, my name is uh, Mike Jackson. I'm a resident of Kingsburg and I'm opposed to the flag, but maybe for different reasons than most. Uh, one of my favorite speakers in, or people in history was Dr. Martin Luther King. And I love his speech about uh, that he, he, he saw a, a colorless society, that he saw people for not what they were, but how they acted. And I, I, I am afraid that the vote for the flag is, is vote for tribalism. I am against groupings and uh, separations. And I, I would just like to see us to see each other with, with unity and instead of elevating different groups and segments of society. So I, and a vote against the flag is not a vote against LGBTQ. It's, it's basically a vote against disunity and bringing up, elevating separatism and group different groupings. So we appreciate you guys. Thank you for serving our community. Thank you. Please state your name and if you're a resident of Kingsburg. My name Hello. is Pam, 
And yes, I am a res resident of King Kingsburg and I oppose this. Thank you very much. Please state your name and if you're a resident of Kingsburg. Hello? Yes. My name is Matthew. I am a resident of Kingsburg. And where I'm not opposed to LGBTQ, I am opposed to flying the flag. And I think the reason for that mostly is because most of the residents in the town are opposed to it. And if it were to go to a vote of all the people in the town, I think that it would be declined. But I think we should do what's best for the town. Thank you. Thank you. Please state your name and if you're a resident of Kingsburg. Yes, my, my name, name is Jennifer. Go ahead, Jennifer. My name my, my name is Jennifer. Uh, I am a member uh, of Kingsburg community for almost 20 years. I did submit a letter to um, the clerk. I do have um, members in my immediate family in the community of LGBT. Um, I do have a daughter that did attend high school and never did um, have a bullying problem is what was presented by many members that have spoken earlier. I feel that this talk earlier, um, we could use more resources in a better way, maybe using them toward helping the students in the high school maybe and having some assistance for those that might have issues in the community and a flag will not help that and we should help our youth in that manner rather than waving a flag. I don't think a flag will help that in any manner and I am opposed to the flag and also my daughter that is in the community feels that the flag will not help her in any manner is that respect as well so that is my feeling in that matter so I appreciate your time and listening thank you Thank you very much. And just a reminder to anybody that is on the phone, if you've already submitted um, written comment via email for public comment, then they've already been entered into the record. And so you do not need to come forward and repeat um, what has been submitted. That being said, is there anyone else on the line? If so, please um, state your name. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Email. Hello. Then they've already been entered into the record, and so Hello. Yes. Please turn your. If you're listening to this on Facebook, please put it on mute when you are on the phone because we're having a lot of feedback and it's difficult to hear you. So once you've done that, please state your name and if you're a resident of Kingsburg. Um, can you hear me now? Yes. Hello, my name is Sylvia, and yes, I am a resident of Kingsford, and I am okay with displaying the flag. People are talking about a parade, adding additional flags. Nothing was ever mentioned about this. It's strictly about one flag for one month. And also, I just want to give Jewel Hurtado some credit. You're very brave for bringing this up, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please state your name and if you're a resident of Kingsburg and if you've already submitted public comment, um, please let the next person speak. Yes, yes. Hello. My name is Amy Garcia. I'm a 15 year resident of Kingsburg. Love this town. Um, it's a uh, the people compare what some people do with their sexual Hi, my name is Judy Torres, and I totally disagree with displaying the flag in downtown Kingsburg. I don't feel it's necessary. I feel it's divisive. And I just feel like the only flags that need to be displayed is those of America and, of course, our heritage of the Swedish flag. Thank you. Thank you. And we're going to ask that if you can mute behind you, um, if you're listening live on Facebook, if so, um, if you don't do that, it's too difficult for us to hear you and we're going to have to skip to the next caller. So please state your name and if you're a resident of Kingsburg. 
Yeah, Hi. my name is Mark. I am a gay man who lives in Kingsburg. Uh, for 30 years, I've had to live a double life. Kingsburg is so judgmental. I was picked on in school for many years, even physically bullied. Kingsburg needs to learn to respect diversity and just do the right thing. Who is it going to hurt? Thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, again, my name is Abel. I'm a 15-year resident of Kingsburg. What people do in their bedrooms, it's offensive that people compare that to being black, white, or brown. We're not bigots. You keep what you do in your room, we'll keep it what we do in ours. It's also very sad that Jewel has decided to use our conservative town to exalt her name and her future career. Whatever that may be, as a career politician, this is a good first step, I guess. you got a politician written all over that at this young age. For those from other towns, there's a reason this city of Kingsburg is low on crime and is known as the crown jewel of this area. And that reason is it's conservatism. So please, keep your failed ideas in your town. Of course, I am opposed to this resolution. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next caller, please state your name and if you're a resident of Kingsburg. My name is Maddie Jordan, and I am a resident of Kingsburg, and I am absolutely against this flag. We have one flag that covers all of the people, and that is the American flag, and that is the only thing we need. Thank you. Thank you, Maddie. Next caller, please state your name and if you're a resident of Kingsburg. Yeah, so I'm not going to state my name because I'm underage, um, and I just don't feel safe, but I am a resident of Kingsburg. Um, I called in specifically because I've been watching Facebook Live and I just got really fed up. Um, I am queer. I'm 15 years old. And watching this town come together directly to just discriminate against gay people, queer people, it's just, it brings tears to my eyes. I'm 15 years old. I'm a freshman. I go to school every day and I get called slurs. I get hated on, I get people telling me to kill myself. And the fact that these people, no matter if you're Christian or not, no matter what color you are, it really doesn't matter because I'm a Christian myself, I understand. Um, the fact that we are coming together directly to discriminate and they have that much hate in their bodies and that you guys can't just get together and hang up a flag for one month. We aren't asking for a parade. We aren't asking for some big recognition. We're asking for one small thing. One small thing that we deserve after years and years of discrimination. I'm 15 years old. Do you think I should get told to kill myself every day for something that I can't change? Absolutely not. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller, please state your name and if you're a resident of Kingsburg. My yes, name hi, my is name is Tracy Melissa Howell. I'm a resident of Kingsburg for over 20 years. I would like to say that I do support the flag for the month of June. Um, many have been stating how they would uh, are against it because they feel that it would separate it. But I think that they are missing the point. If for nothing less, then it would be useful to teach your children acceptance. The conversation of acceptance, I believe, is what the whole uh, reason for the flag being posted would be for. It doesn't matter whether or not you're, again, colors, race, whether you're gender, it, it's all about acceptance. And I think that that, I can't speak for Joel, but I'm guessing that that was the whole point behind this is to teach the citizens of this town acceptance, something that's been very long needed. Um, and after all of the comments and things that have gone on this evening, because I've watched from the very beginning, that has become very evident that this town really needs to learn to accept. Thank you. And I am accepting, uh, I support the, the flying of the flag for the month of June. Thank you. Next caller, please state your name and if you're a resident of Kingsburg. Yes, hi, my name is Melissa and I am a very, very recent resident of Kingsburg. I um, actually came from Fowler. Um, I wasn't gonna call in, we were actually
actually out there earlier. My daughter is 14. I'm actually very nervous and discouraged. I um, was super excited to live here. And after everything that's gone on tonight, uh, I'm scared for my daughter. My daughter is 14. She is um, bisexual. She's very um, accepted where she's come from. And tonight, while we were standing outside, she's wearing her little rainbow kissy face um, shirt, you know, out there. There's so many adults, they're so outnumbered by grown men that are just staring us down and staring her down with just, everyone keeps saying that they, they're, they love and they're accepted, you know, like they don't want the flag, but it's not because they're against gays and then, you know, they don't have problems and they love everybody, but their actions are so scary and like, I'm, I'm really nervous for her, and I really feel like I had to call and say that I am in support of the flag, that there is a lot of people like my daughter um, who's very, um, you know, young, and she doesn't have anybody to really stick up for her, and I just wanted to call in and say that I do feel like there's a lot of hate, and I do feel like um, the flag is just one month, and... Um, I, I think I think it's a good idea. So thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other callers on the line? If so, state your name and if you're a resident of Kingsburg. Hi, my name is Andrew Cantu. I hope. Oh, hi, my name is Andrew Cantu, and I am a resident of Kingsburg. Uh, I'm also a mental health professional working here in the city, and I see it as essential that our community perpetuate a climate of inclusivity and diversity, and that includes advocating for our brothers and sisters in the LGBTQ plus community. Um, as an aside, uh, those of us who know Jewel personally and have gotten to know her as a friend know that she has gone out of her way to advocate for this cause, not because of some leftist agenda she has pursued it because of her desire to work towards a more equitable and inclusive community. And for that, um, I am in favor of Jules' uh, motion. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Do we have any other callers on the line? If so, state your name and if you're a resident of Kingsburg. My name is Ben Carlson, Kingsburg resident, work in town as well. Um, I'd like to uh, refer the council members to the Kingsburg Charter Plan. Section 2.02 .02 is the general powers and duties of the city council. And these are duties that the city council has uh, sworn to uphold when they were elected. Line item A, the first one, considering ordinances and resolutions and adopting those which it determines to be necessary for governance, proper administration, and adequate financing of the city. We're hearing opinions on a proposed ordinance tonight, and I would just ask you guys to consider whether or not this is absolutely necessary for proper governance and administration of Kingsburg. There will be some financing involved with that as well, but more importantly, is this absolutely necessary for the governance of our community? Nobody has spoken on this tonight. I ask that you guys consider this before you cast your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other callers? If so, state your name and if you're a resident. Hello. Hi. Go ahead. My name is Leslie Nelson. I live in Selma, California. Um, I just wanted to call in. I have a son who is gay who went to Selma High. He was uh, severely bullied throughout all of his um, years at the high school and the junior high. Um, contemplated suicide a couple of different times. Um, his first inclination when he graduated from high school, he moved away. He moved away from us. He moved down to L.A. to where he felt more comfortable. Um, he's now a, uh, on the dean's list at Columbia University in New York. He's doing very, very well. He's had a really hard time up until the last few years. Went back to school and was around a lot of the people who accepted him. I feel Kingsburg... Um, would do people a lot of good and a lot of students, a lot of young youth really well. 
uh, by um, flying the flag for them. It's not, um, it's not anything that says anything about the people who live there. It's just showing acceptance for them. And a lot of the kids move out of the area when they um, are able to because they're afraid of where they live. And I would just hate to see that happen for the Kingsburg residents because um, there's a lot of good students there, and I would hope that they would stay around your area and, you know, pursue their lives there. And I appreciate the time. Thank you so much, and I am all for flying the flag there in Kingsburg. Thank, Thank you. you. Next caller, please. My name is Daniel, and I'm a citizen of Kingsburg, and I've heard a lot of hurting people tonight. And I wonder if flying a flag or having a gathering where we can all get together as one would be better. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Next caller. Uh, yeah, my name is uh, Lewis Atkins. I'm a resident of Kingsburg. Uh, I'm opposed to this, uh, not for religious reasons or because I'm against uh, the community, I just feel that the only flags that should be flown above a government building are government flags. The American flag, California flag, the city of Kingsburg flag, if we decide to adopt one, um, the Swedish flag, because it's a government flag. Um, I I've been hearing a lot of people talk about stuff tonight, and people have said, said one thing or the other, but no one has said that people can't fly a rainbow flag in their yard. Nobody has said that they can't fly a flag in their business. Um, you know, it, Gay Pride Month, it, it's, a, it's a recognized holiday for the government. You know, if we want to put banners on light poles like we do for Christmas or anything else, hey, that's fine. You know, we, we're not saying that we shouldn't celebrate this month. Um, all I'm saying is, is that not on a government building. If we want to put on the light poles or if we want to put down in the park or, you know, in your front yard or in business windows, all for it. Let's do it. Um, and that being said, too, maybe it should be put to a city vote with all the citizens and not with the city council. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller. Can you hear me? Yes. My name is Heidi. I am a current resident of Kingsburg for 20 years. Um, honestly, I find this all exhausting. The fact that pride and the flag and everything else is being shoved down our throats. The amount of hypocrisy that comes from the LGBTQ community, um, as far as we have to accept them and their beliefs, but they don't have ours and our beliefs, has nothing to do with them personally. A lot of it is based on their faith and what we, at me as a Christian, believe. And I think that if you, if it passes to fly a, a rainbow flag in honor of Pride Month, then a flag that that celebrates traditional marriage should be flown as well. Because I don't understand why there has to be something, a special treatment for people that believe a certain way, especially on a government building. And like another caller had previously said, there's one flag that we should be flying, and that is the American flag. It covers us all. In this country, we have the freedom to be whoever we want to be. Wh whatever beliefs we have, we're free to have those beliefs. And I don't believe that anybody should be shoving their beliefs down anyone's throat. So I don't think the residents of Kingsburg should be forced to celebrate and accept something that they don't accept. That's all I have to say. I am against putting this flag on a government building. Thank you. Next caller. Hello, my Hello. name is Claudia Salinas, and I'm a Kingsburg resident, and I am 100% against having the flag flown on our city hall building or anywhere in our one of our government buildings here in town. Thank you. Next caller. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, my name is Salvador Florio Reese, and I'm a resident and council member for the city of Delano. I represent over 50,000 residents. First off, I applaud Councilwoman Jewel Hurtado for championing this. You are where you are meant to be, Jewel. And to all the LGBTQIA organizers that have came out bravely to speak on this, I applaud you. 
And as elected officials, we need to do more when it comes to lifting up marginalized communities, and that includes this community. It's a human rights issue to be able to live your truth. A flag or proclamation will not solve the adversity that the LGBTQIA community faces. But by doing this, the city of Kingsburg will stand in solidarity with all members of the community. All eyes are on Kingsburg tonight. Many will see if you will push Kingsburg forward or pull Kingsburg back. This will send a clear message to all surrounding cities and folks that regardless of who they love or who they are, they are welcome in your community and they are accepted. And I know that if Jesus were here today, he would be here supporting this. And to all members of the LGBTQIA community listening, you have an entire group of people who support you. Do not let the hatred that you are hearing put you down. You matter and you belong. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller. Hello, my name is Adam and I am a resident of Kingsburg and I have grown up here. As for all the people saying that Kingsburg is a town of hatred because we disagree with your personal beliefs could not be any more wrong. Disagreeing does not mean you hate someone. That is the right we have as human beings to have our own opinion. If we do not agree with you, that does not mean we hate you. Now, as for the flag, I am against it because I personally believe that the issue isn't a flag. If you believe that flying a flag will get rid of all of your problems, you are mistaken. You are struggling with something that is internal that only you can defeat. It is not a community support that will fix that. You have to find the strength in yourself to fix that, however you do that. Do not put it on the community and say the community is full of hatred because they disagree with you or they have their own views, religious or political. Now, as a Christian man and as a father, I do not want my daughter having to deal with this while she's going through school and wondering what does this flag mean and what does that flag mean the flag of my church is not flown in the city hall building and that to me would be an injustice to fly the flag of a separate group and not fly the flag of my church there are prisoners of war who have their own flag that is not even flown in the city council building they have fought for this country and suffered and have truthfully suffered and felt PTSD and their flag is not being flown. So why are we going to applaud one group who is dealing with an emotional issue? This right. group can grow up, purchase a building, and fly their flag in front of their own building, just like the VSW does, just like the POWs do, just like the NRA does. We do not place our flag in your home, in your place of worship, in your place of government. We do that on our own property with pride. Place it on your property with pride and please figure out what the issue is within and do not expect social acceptance to fix your issue. Thank you. Not. Your your time is up. We're going to move on to the next caller. Thank you. Thank you. Well, well said. Anyone else on the line? Hello. Hi. Go ahead. State your Hi. name. Uh, yeah, my name is Tara Burns, and I was just calling to say that I'm not for the flag. I understand that there are a lot of emotions going on tonight, and I feel everything that everyone said. Um, my standpoint is, you know, if anyone wants to feel oppressed or saddened by something and say that they can't fit into a community, which is very welcoming. I moved here from Selma, and growing up, I didn't really feel welcome there. When I came here, I felt even more like an outcast. And after that, you know, you realize that people are welcoming, and it is what you, it is what you make it. A lot of people say, I need to get out of this town. They leave, and they always come back. This is a beautiful place to live, and I think that um, from my standpoint, the thing that bothers me the most is... Um, when they're talking about suicide. They're talking about suicide like every person doesn't ever feel like that. And it's really hard to talk about. And that's the thing is every kid in high school feels that way at some side. Sometimes 
you just have to let your emotions fly and or hold them together most people hold them together it's just a feeling that everyone gets and they know that it's wrong and so whenever it comes down to that i just think that um you know suicide is a very hot topic and it's very diverse in many ways just because you're gay or lesbian doesn't mean that you're always been suicidal just like if you're straight doesn't mean you haven't been either so i know my time's probably up but i think that that's probably the biggest issue that's been brought into light tonight that needs to be hit on the most because i don't want anyone to feel like they ever need to kill themselves or they're not welcome in this town because i will welcome them with open arms just like many people standing outside who have gone there tonight and spoke in their minds and I'm so proud of every single one of them because it takes a lot. I didn't want to call and ramble on tonight, but once I heard everyone who got up there and spoke their fears and even even on your side, Jules, I understand. I get it. And I'm sorry that you're going through this, but I accept you. And I hope that you know, Martin you don't Torres, need a flag. I Okay, thank you. Your time is up. We're on to the next caller. I'll simply say I oppose putting any other flag other than the United States flag thank up on any of the buildings in Kingsburg. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other callers on the line? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hello. This is a. Uh, uh, sorry to interrupt. Hi, this is Brian Osorio, Mayor for the City of Delano. I'm calling in support of Councilwoman Julio Hurtado and her efforts to promote the safety, well-being, and uh, acceptance of the LGBTQ plus community in Kingsburg and throughout the Central Valley. I've gotten notifications and messages about the efforts going on today and about all the comments from both sides. And I just want to remind, uh, you know, the mayor and the council that there are going to be two sides of history for tonight and for the future. And Councilwoman Julio Estado will be standing on the right side of it. So thank you, Councilwoman Julio Estado, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we're going to take two more phone calls, and then we're going to have to end the public uh, comment for tonight. Is there anyone else on the line? Hi, can you hear um, yes. me? Oh. Yes. Um, my name is Jasmine, and I'm not a Kingsburg resident, but I live in the surrounding rural area of Fresno County. And firstly, I would like to commend Councilman Hurtado for her bravery and the commitment to her community that she's demonstrated tonight. She's faced so many ad hominem attacks and basically been told to leave her city just for trying to support fellow members of her community and as a young person and a person of color i am inspired by her words and actions tonight and secondly i'd like to say that though this is an issue pertaining to kingsburg a resolution supporting lgbtq plus people would make waves throughout the central valley in efforts for inclusivity inclusivity and diversity and bolster lgbtq individuals and especially young people so i urge the kingsburg kingsburg city council to consider the positive community-wide implications that a yes vote will have for the rural Central Valley and all queer people who are so often afraid to be themselves in their own communities. Thank you. Thank you. We will take one more caller and then we'll have to move on. We are, um, we're at about four hours of public comment and we're still on the first item. My name is Hello. My name is Anthony um, Alvarez, Jessica. and I have grown up, I grew up in Kingsburg, 99% of my family still lives in Kingsburg. Since you are my wrestling coach, Laura, I have worked closely with your sister. Um, I love that community. One of my best friends is, is, is gay. Um, I, however, I fail to see how all these other public officials are using this as their platform to give this speech um i just it, i've heard everything everyone is at a state tonight and it is awful the teasing the the harassment it's awful but you have to understand that flying a flag 
is not going to change any of that. And I would like to ask Ms. Jewell how that would change any of that. It's not going to change anybody's heart or mind. Thank you, and we will be ending public comment. Yeah, let's take a stretch break real quick. Good idea. I did too. Yeah. I kind of ate. I was busy I really packing the snack bags. Do you need mine? I have the gummy bears. <laughs> I have a touch. Okay. Sugar. Are we all here? Okay, we're closing public comment and now moving on to council discussion. All I heard was big size. I mean, I feel like I definitely gave the presentation and I'm just kind of ready to hear what you guys are thinking, how you're feeling after hearing all of that. I feel like I've done enough talking. Um, <laughs> so, what are your thoughts? How are you feeling? I'll go. Go. Right. So my thoughts on this are that I just don't believe that it's appropriate city business. I think that this is a personal crusade for you, uh, Councilmember Hurtado. I respect that crusade, but it doesn't make it City of Kingsburg business. That's my issue with this. That being said, it's my husband. Just into it. <laughs> Scared me. It's my escort to my car. With that being said, we're here, so I'm going to give what is our, my opinion and what I've been told by the constituents with this. To anybody in the community that doesn't feel like they're welcome members of this community, I want you to know that you absolutely are welcome as citizens of this town. If you don't feel like you're part of this community for some reason, get involved in the community and become a member of the community. This is an accepting community, and I do believe this community is accepting of all people. I have not seen anything to the contrary of that. To those that are out there that are wanting to see a proclamation, and wanting to see a flag as a showing of acceptance for the LGBTQ community, I think you have that in a different form. I think that you have that with an elected official. This town has elected an official that is part of that community. I think that is a pure representation, and I think that that is a very democratic representation. You were elected by hundreds of people to sit up here. I disagree with the flag and I disagree with the proclamation. I think that you are up here for four years as that representation. Every week, every time we have a meeting, you are that voice. I don't see the need to have a flag to limit that to 30 days. I think that we're an inclusive community, and I hope that we continue to do that. I know it's not popular. I know that we're all, no matter which way we go on this, we're going to have people that are against us. You know, We're going to have people that say negative things about us either way. 
That being said, I'm not going to support the proclamation. If you are gay, straight, black, white, or any category in this arena, you're a citizen of Kingsburg, and I want it to stay united as such. I am just tired of the us conversation tonight. I'm tired of the they conversation tonight. I really just want to get all of us back to we as a community in Kingsburg. That's all I have to say. Thank you, and I appreciate your honest comments, and um, I respect your comments, and, and thank you for that. I think that uh, people who are part of this community do have representation here today, and it's a very, very unique thing to, to see here in the Valley. It's a young and queer person. But like I said, this was not done for me, and you know we're tired of hearing it, but imagine living that life. Now, I, I hear you. You don't want to hang a flag or do a proclamation. Um, and I can see where the flag can be controversial here because they're right. Do we maybe we have to hang a flag for everything else? I also have a son with special needs. Somebody brought that up tonight, right? Um, being queer isn't my only struggle. You know, I think we all face a lot of things and, and hardships. Um, but I, I kind of want to maybe, maybe meet you in the middle, um, where I see that the flag can be too much. Can the proclamation be just enough? Can we meet there? Can we, because we're talking about how we're tired of hearing this, and once again, I just want to say, imagine living that life. And if this small thing that we can do, which is already drafted, we just have to delete the flag part, can that be something that we can do? And maybe we can recognize other things. Pandora's box, opening it up, is it that, is it that bad? I mean, do we want to recognize um, not just this, but other things? I don't see why not. I don't see how it hurts. And so that's what I'm asking of the council, is that somewhere we can meet in the middle? Because we can proclaim other things. We don't have to do the most for them. And I totally agree with that first public comment that we got tonight, that we should have a group. There are resources available and there are groups out there, but they're not Kingsburg specific. And I would love to get behind that. Um, because yeah, I told you guys in the beginning, this is not like the end all be all in the answer. It's just a small step that we can make towards making people feel included. And if that's not in a flag, can we do that with the proclamation? So I'm just offering that. Um, I also um, would like to share my thoughts too. And I did write them down because I know there's a lot of emotions going, going on tonight. Um, so in listening to, first of all, this cannot be based off of our personal beliefs. That is not what we're voted up here to do. My personal beliefs are not what has to drive this. And that can be a struggle. We are voted in by our constituents. And so over the last seven days since last Wednesday, um, we've been listening to them and citizens tonight. And clearly we have a lot of work to do in this town. We do. Um, a proclamation and a flag are not going to solve a systemic problem. And the systemic problem is many people in our community feel like they don't belong. Um, when I say community members, I mean all members, regardless of like ethnicity, culture, religious beliefs, gender, political affiliation, or sexual orientation. This is not a government issue. This is a community issue. And that's what I feel like here. This is a government entity. It's a community issue, and it's a heart issue. Um, we as human beings are called to love each other and support each other, and we don't have to celebrate everything about everybody's lives, but we can still love each other regardless of our differences. As a city, I believe this is not an issue that should involve the government or the council, and we ourselves can't demand change. We saw that with the pandemic when people were telling us what to do. Like, we're going to have rebellion. We cannot demand the change in our community that comes from our community and um, I I won't vote in favor of the proclamation if that's what it comes to because I don't believe that as an elected official that I get to decide for the citizens what they should celebrate and what they should not um, I do believe that there are many issues brought up today that do require our attention as a city council um, I think the percentage of struggling teens and young adults in our town that the um, one of the slides that you had up here that showed us the percentages uh, of one more right there the Trevor project 
to me, that was heart wrenching. That demands our council and our city to do something about that, not just for our young people who are in the LGBTQ plus community, but all of our young people, especially coming out of a time when we've been sheltered in place. They've been in their bedrooms behind computers and not being able to be social. I think that as a council, we can address that. And as our city, we can. We can step forward and we consider maybe using some of our um, our ARPA funds or something. I had mentioned this before to build resources in our community for free or low cost counseling to build that up. One of the percent, one of the things here says 46% of our youth wanted psychological or emotional counseling for mental health, but were unable to receive it in the past 12 months. That's a problem. And I think when we heard over and over and over again tonight from many of our youth that were talking about suicide or nobody to talk to, that is something as a community that we can address. Yeah, I have something to also, Jewel. Um, I wrote it down too so that I could remember my thoughts. <laughs> um, so I have lived here in Kingsburg all of my 56 years of life. Kingsburg is a gem of a city for all cities in California. It is very clean. We have low crime with the, with the great work of our PD. We have great schools with really good teachers. People here like one another. They look out for one another. We have a very diverse community. No matter what race you are, what religion you are, whether you are atheist, whether you are gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, Kingsburg is a welcoming city. Kingsburg is not perfect. No city is. Our citizens know it is a great place to live and raise a family. That is why we have generations of people who have chosen to stay and live here. I myself am third generation. My, my son and daughter are fourth generation, and I hope my grandchildren will be fifth generation here in Kingsburg. As an elected official and leader of the community, I want people to know that I will not bring my own personal and social issues to this council. As a councilman, I want issues that bring our community and citizens closer together, not that divide us and put one against another. I want our citizens to know that you are all welcome here in Kingsburg, no matter what race, religion, sexual orientation, or how you identify yourself, you are welcome here. Also visitors and non-citizens are welcome here in Kingsburg. And if you do come and visit our, or live here in our community, you will find that it is a great place to be. And that's how I feel and, uh, you know, just wanna give you my feelings on that. And, and I feel for, you know, these young kids that are feeling like they don't belong here or they uh, feel like they may wanna commit suicide, but that's that's the issues that we do need to you know it was the, the first girl that spoke talked about starting up a kingsburg pride a pride group i think that's a good idea or one other person talked about anti-bullying you know maybe we can help facilitate that or you know or things of things of that nature i think are better than you know what what happened here tonight so that's how i feel about it well, I think that, first of all, I just want to commend everybody coming forward tonight. It's, you know, like you said, this past week has been an overwhelming um, support on one side. Another side, I've heard not only from people who had concerns about it, but also shared their own personal beliefs, but also um, opened their hearts to say, here's some other things that maybe we can do. And as members of this community, everyone has to remember first and foremost, we are members of this community. We're parents here, we're educators here, we've been coaches here. Um, 
I have listened to both sides. I have listened to friends of my children write in letters. I have had phone calls. I have had um, emails and people here tonight. And as someone who's raised my kids to love everyone, regardless of their race or sexual orientation, um, the one thing that I think is so important is for a community is its diversity and acceptance. That's what makes a great community. I think we've kind of heard that over and over again. Mm -hmm. Love thy neighbor. We heard that over and over again. Well, if people really do believe that, then we need to embrace everybody who is part of the LBGTQ plus community. And by saying that, I really did appreciate Ali coming forward at the very beginning and bring up um, the Kingsburg pride. And the one thing we know about you, Council Member Hurtado is that you're a go-getter. And so there are so many other things that we can do here that will support this community and then some. I think there's a way that we can collaborate with the schools, with the churches, with other groups, and then to start how we had a youth council, maybe this goes into this now and then that's where you take it on and you start to bring the adults together and community members together because clearly there's a lot of support here from both sides, a lot of support here that want to see our kids thrive. To, to read these letters and if anyone out there is against this, just read the letters that we've received. These are real letters that these, not only students but young adults have sent us and you cannot deny the suicide rates that these this group goes through. We even re we heard from the executive director of NAMI, the National Alliance for Mental Illness. She also sent us in a letter. Um, the last thing we want at, for our community is any of our children not to feel safe. It's not just bullying, it's beyond bullying. This is way worse than that. If you've ever sat with any of these kids and heard this, you'd understand that. So I know Kingsburg can do a great job and by embracing everybody we've said it well let's keep going then we've said we're going to well let's keep how more can we support this group so the one thing that i know councilmember hurtado is you can figure out a way that we can support this community and even do bigger and better things with this because clearly there's a need for this if not we wouldn't have all these people out here so I, I know there's a way we can do it, whether it's through funds, through the city, but I, I just know we've got to find a way that we, that every single, I keep saying child, because we have young adults that have moved away that haven't felt safe to come back. We want them to come back. We want them to be thriving members in our community, but we also want adults that are here too to feel accepted that they can walk down our streets. And that's the most important thing at the end of the day. And I'm sure that's why you brought this forward anyway, was for everybody to feel accepted here in Kingsburg. So next steps, so what do we do next? I feel like I just heard every one of you support it and proclaim that you support it. That's all that this would be doing. That's all that this would be doing. You all just said it. But what's gonna happen is this isn't going to be passed. And that's heartbreaking. And it's a personal thing for me, sure. <coughs> But it's a part of this community that we're talking about, all of us. We're a small percentage of it. And obviously, we didn't see that many comments tonight, but the ones that we did, we can do all of those things. I, I do my best to do those things on a regular basis. I mean, you guys know me. You said I'm a go-getter, I am. Yep, you are. This isn't a part of a political agenda. This is for those kids that came in here tonight. We all just said it, they're important and they're worth something. That is all a proclamation would do. After that proclamation is done, whether we decide to do anything or not after that is, is on us. I'm committed to doing it no matter what, whether you vote, that, whether there's no votes all around, right? That is, I, you know, that's that. I can't make you, you make a decision. But we all just said we support them, and that's all this would do. If people really aren't gonna reelect you or like you or cancel you because you voted yes, that is hate in their heart because you just said you support them, but then the city will not support them. It's, it's, it's just contradictory. But once again, that is your decision. And once again, this is city business, <laughs> you know. 
I don't want to interrupt you, but I do want to speak to one thing that you said. Sure. Yeah. You said that if they don't support it, that's hate in their heart. And I do want to differentiate that there is a difference. You can be a non-supporter of this proclamation and flag, just as I am, with zero hate for this community. <clears throat> None of me hates this community, but I don't support the proclamation and I don't support the flag. That is one thing that I want to make a clear differentiation with because those are things that I don't think are city business. That's what that is. Looks fine. I'm just saying we can do all of those things. And I think that there is an arena for that. And I think there is an arena for us as citizens and community members to to do those things that you're wanting to do. And you're right. It will happen no matter what. But as elected officials. It will happen no matter what. Elected officials are elected to represent all of their communities and to speak on behalf of all of their communities. And, And quite frankly, I knocked on every door in my district. And a lot of people don't like me. And that's fine. But a lot of people do. And a lot of people support this. And I, I just want to say the only reason I'm getting a little bit like we're not letting this go yet is because I waited three years to do this. And it is hard because it is a personal thing. But for a lot of people, a lot of people came in here tonight saying it's a choice, it's a lifestyle, it's a sin. And I love the person, but I hate the sin. And, and that it's a choice, and like, like I said, in a lifestyle. Discrimination in the workplace, based on, you know, whether you like green or blue, it's not the same thing. This is completely different. Somebody on the phone tonight said they were too scared to say their name because they were scared of what would happen to them at work tomorrow. And I, quite frankly, I was so scared for the people coming in and out because I don't know who's out there. I didn't invite those outside people to come here tonight. And so I just, I want to talk about this a little bit more because I know we've been here for four hours and I know it's really hard. But when we talk about being elected by people, you know, to, to serve this, and this isn't the arena, then why have other cities done it if it's not the arena? It's, it's a common practice among other cities, and we would be one of the first. We take that pride and joy in being able to say Kingsburg is welcoming. We love our town. It's safe. It's clean. We love all of our departments, and I thank them every day for all the work that they do. And this small part of our community just wants a proclamation. And then I would love to see us also act upon those things after, like I said, at your pleasure. But I also think that part of unity and being Kingsburg is not elevating one group over any other. Part of unity is we're together. So I can't support a proclamation where it is... um, Yes, I agree with all of the all of the things that we heard, and we need to do something for the youth of Kingsburg, young people in Kingsburg, those that need counseling, not just from the LGBTQ plus community, all of them. We need to do something for all of them. What is written in the proclamation, I can't support that because part of unity in Kingsburg is we all need to support each other, not one group over another group. We're Kingsburg. And if we aren't feeling like we're Kingsburg, then we need to fix that within each other and not just have one group, whether it's a flag, you know, whatever other way, we need to fix it amongst each other and we need to figure it out within our pride group, whatever um, groups that we have, whether it's in the schools, whether it's in the churches, whether it's in community organizations, That needs to be the movement. The movement needs to be, we are Kingsburg and we're in this together and we are not going to, we're not going to stand for bullying. We're not going to stand for harassment for any of this. Not one group elevated or different than everyone else. Because I think that when we start doing that, we are making them different. We're making them different. We're making them separate. And I think then it is causing the division. It doesn't just have to be this group. If there is if another it was a- group that somebody is really passionate about, and I'm not talking about straight pride, that is completely different. I'm just going to throw that out there. That is a personal opinion. Something if it was a different. proclamation that said, in Kingsburg, we support all of our community, all of our citizens, um, regardless of. 
regardless of race, religion, <laughs> political affiliation, sexual orientation, or anything, we're part of a community. And as part of a community, we support and we love each other as a community. We don't tolerate hate. We don't tolerate bullying. You are safe in this town. If it was all encompass encompassing like that, that's something that I can support. Yeah, you know, for me, Julie, you said you're the one that said it, that we are elected here to represent our constituents or the citizens of Kingsburg. Well, from what I heard tonight, I mean, I totaled it up and, and what I've been hearing in the community and emails. For me, it's been overwhelmingly that the citizens are, you know, don't want this. So that's what I'm doing as a council, as an elected official and a leader is what the people want. And for me, I mean, it's been overwhelming that Kingsbury doesn't want this proclamation. So I can't vote to support it. You know, that's what I was elected to do, be a voice for the people. And it's majority, you know, so. I still love you, Jill. <laughs> well, I, I hope that all of those that did speak up in support of, of it, of uh, the proclamation, and also that did send in emails to all of us again. I mean, the emails were very well written and really tugged at your heart at times too sure that it does come from the top from all of us and seeing that the five of us um, are acknowledging the LBT LBGTQ plus community here and saying to them we're gonna figure something out here for you guys so that you do feel supported and respected and that when they go out there they should never feel that way in this community and if they're having those issues, they should come to us and then let's see what we can do. You know, whether that means we're, you know, starting a special group to help with that, whatever it is, we're, we're that part, we're, we don't have to figure out tonight. But I just hope they hear loud and clear that we've said it over and over again tonight, that that's one thing that we definitely do support. So it's, um, the next thing is action as deemed necessary. Well, I hear that tonight we have talked about wanting to do other things and I would like to do those things. You talked about using funding to help pay for counseling. I wanna do that because if we can't do this, what else are we gonna do? And I love that idea. I think that's a great idea. And also to your point, you know, to all the people that were listening um, who did support this, um, you're loved. I don't know if you're listening still, I don't know if you're still on the phone. It's kind of late. Um, <clears throat> but I, I, I tried. <laughs> I can say I tried. I can, I can, um, I can say I tried. So, um, but with that being said, we committed to wanting to do a lot of things tonight. And I think that, that putting your money where your mouth is is even sometimes more powerful than, um, you know, maybe the proclamation. So um, when it comes to, I, I know of a, uh, a local nonprofit. We had somebody speak from the nonprofit here tonight, um, and I, I think that would definitely speak volumes as far as where the council support is. I know that we're not going to agree here, but if we can do that in agreement, I think that would be amazing. What that looks like, I do not know um, because I don't know where we would pull those funds out of. The budget's next month, isn't it? And I hope there's such there's a big crowd next month. We have four hours of public comment on where we should be using our city's funds because that's really important, right? Um, and also, um, I would encourage you all because here tonight I did not propose having a huge parade or or <laughs> asking everybody in town <laughs> to turn into a homosexual. I did that was not my proposal tonight. Um, I think that being able to once again put our money where our mouths are and show support for this community in this way, it will it will mean a lot. Um, I cannot say that there will be people who are super happy with y'all, but I hope that this can maybe change their mind and we can see something place. positive come out of this because no matter, well, I think we know what's gonna happen, but um, no matter what happens here tonight, um, you know, we still live here and it would be really, really nice to see 
to see that happen and I encourage you all to come to my pride event that I'm gonna have at the park it's not an event it's a party it's supposed to be a celebration but we're gonna be proud no matter what um, so I would love to see funds put to the side to help pay for counseling I think that's a great idea I would love to see our youth council reactivated because COVID is Finally, we're coming out of it. I know, um, Councilmember Roman, you have been a champion for that special committee, and I think a subcommittee would be cool to see, and I would love to run it. And that can be alongside of our um, newly formed group by the first person who gave public comment tonight. Absolutely. I think that would be great. She did great. And I, she <laughs> sure did. And I think we can partner with um, um, our local nonprofits specifically um, and not to be biased here because I know I'm on the board, but the Fresno EOC does have an LGBTQ plus um, resource center who holds um, monthly support groups and maybe we can offer the senior citizen um, room available for them to hold those spaces here in Keensburg every so often for free of cost. And um, that would really be impactful um, to hopefully try to gain that um, and, and make it comfortable for them to want to come out unlike tonight I hope that you know, the list you, of things are sorry once you put your heads together and, and adults you hear a lot of adults that were very supportive too that once you guys all put your heads together I can just imagine what's what good is going to come out of this positive and that's what you're looking for at the end of the day is the, the positive side of things so I think that um, there was a lot of discussion here from the public tonight a lot I think the last seven days I know personally I've learned a lot and I'm sure many of you also have but I think one thing consistent in this town and from everyone that we heard is we want a safe community where people feel welcome and we can work together with some of those things that you talked about to figure that out and that ARPA money we could use towards counseling correct Alex uh, I think there's some COVID related you know, legislation in there. Or there's some language in there about working with the nonprofit groups, but I think you know, we're still kind of waiting on some of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, if I were to motion to vote for this, I wouldn't have a second or unless I would, but appreciate you guys. Um, Are you making a motion or withdrawing? I make a motion to have the city recognize um, LGBTQ plus Pride Month and accept my proposal. I didn't lose. I didn't lose. No, of course no. not. Of course not. I'm ready to finish this meeting, though. This mm -hmm. community still wins because you're still yes. going to keep working with them and you're going to still keep figuring out other ways to support them. So that's that's at the end of the day, that's what's yeah. the, that's the what best outcome. And for the record, any disrespect that was targeted at you tonight, like that was uncalled for. Joel. I'm going to take that blank check and we're going to give counseling to everybody in this town, regardless if they're gay or not. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she still gives me that check. Because I'm not going anywhere, people. Okay, Sorry. So um, motion dies. We will move on to number five, which is consent calendar. And um, on consent calendar, we have 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, 5.4, 5.5, 5.6, and 5.7. I'll need a motion and a second. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Okay. Item 6.1, um, COVID-19 update from City Manager Alexander Henderson. Madam Mayor, members of council, uh, a few quick updates. Uh, to date, we provided over uh, 2,400 vaccines uh, at our local site. Um, this, the uh, county did provide us with uh, 200 uh, $20 local gift cards. Uh, as of today, all of those have been uh, distributed. So we've reached out to them to figure out if they're going to um, continue that or re-up those gift cards. So. Um, uh, we, we still do have, uh, I believe, over 100 of the Johnson & Johnson doses uh, remaining uh, as well, so still taking appointments. Um, any questions on the vaccines? 
Yeah. Uh, one other thing is we are about the community. Well, what the county shows as the community or Kingsburg, which is larger than the city limits, is that about 41% have received uh, first dose. That's pretty oh, good. The county, that's, that's really good. Is, the county itself's average is like 36 or 37%. So that's great. Right. Last time we were at 39, right? Yes, correct. Okay, so and okay. that's total that's residents. Great. So they've started to break down the county by 12 and older. So the, the county's 12 and older rate is obviously higher than the total resident rate because obviously under 12 are not eligible to receive the vaccine, but they don't have those breakouts for uh, at our level yet. The 41% of total residents in our zip code have, have received at least one dose. So, Did the rates go up once we got Johnson & Johnson back? No. Okay. Decisively, no. <laughs> and then as far as the, um, because now teens can get it, are we going to be advertising more about that, How that the teens are eligible for, for the for Pfizer? Want that we are, and I know the county, I think the county has reached out to school, the school districts uh, to potentially do some site-specific uh, nice. vaccines for 12 to 15. I know they're at least talking about that internally. I don't know if they've made uh, contacts here locally. And then I know that they're working to do a mobile clinic at the Selma Swap Meet uh, for a couple of, or, you know, our, okay. technically it's in Kingsburg City Limits, so that's why we're aware of it. But um, they're trying to do some out there on their Sunday events as well. So trying to hit different communities. And then uh, with regards to the American Rescue Plan, the, the Treasury did release a little bit of information. Most of it, though, was for entitlement communities. So those are the communities that are over 50,000 in population. Uh, so not a ton of new information for us, although they did release some FAQs. Uh, and so there are there is some information that's uh, attached in your in your packet that uh, is relevant to us. Um, but we're just we're kind of still digesting that right now. Um, and we'll have a little bit more information where, you know, the big thing that we're waiting on is that the, um, there are there is some guidance for, that came from the Treasury that gives states um, some additional ability um, with regards to reporting and other things. And because the state will be funneling the money to us, that's what kind of anticipating there will be some additional reporting requirements um, that are required. So um, still waiting on a little bit more information from Treasury with regards to non-entitlement communities and the state of California. So hopefully we'll hear something soon. So that concludes my report. Any council discussion? It's really exciting. I think 41% is pretty good. Mm -hmm. So thank you for all the work you guys are doing over there. Appreciate it. 6.2. You're up again, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, this was, and I thought this is why everybody showed up tonight, actually, <laughs> was to talk about uh, measuring. They might but, still be out front. Yeah, right. Um, uh, so I, I just want to give uh, you know, this is a big portion of our budget development, you know, as we've done over the last several meetings, kind of you know, breaking down the budget in sort of uh, pieces here. Uh, and then at our next meeting, we'll, you'll get the, the full. Uh, um, full proposed budget, but uh, just a reminder, Measure E was approved by 72% of voters during the June 5th, 2018 general election. Uh, it's a 1% uh, uh, transaction and use tax, which is to be used only for uh, public safety. Um, I, I included sort of a breakdown of kind of where you see all your local sales tax goes. So for Kingsburg, we're at 8.975%, uh, which includes 6% to go into the state. 1% goes to uh, comes to the city in the form of what they call Bradley Burns. 0.25% uh, goes to the local transportation fund. And then in Fresno County, um, there's a 0.725% tax you pay. And then um, there is a uh, one that 1% 1 measure um, amount here that makes up our, our total amount. Um, because uh, uh, Measure E is a transaction and use tax, um, that means monies get allocated to this jurisdiction where the tax product is received or registered. So this is why we are able, uh, we get the tax on a motor vehicle under Measure E where we don't get it on the normal 1%. Um, and so uh, we've seen some of those things have impacted the revenue. So a couple of highlights over the first uh, few years that have kind of uh, uh, swayed our decision making, I guess the best way to put it. So in June of 2018, after it was adopted, uh, it officially took effect in October of 2018. So our first uh, fiscal year uh, consisted of nine months um, from October 1, 2018 to June 30, 2019. Uh, we, uh, if you recall, we did some initial expenditures of mostly new equipment, uh, specifically the fire engine was a large one over $600,000 uh, because we weren't entirely sure about how much revenue we would be receiving. and. Uh, there was a ramp up factor in terms of uh, employees as well. Uh, in our first fiscal year of uh, July 1, 2019 to June 30, 2020, our revenues outpaced initial budget projections by about 30%. Uh, 
uh, which increased our fund balance and we started uh, more of our employee hiring in that year. Uh, for this fiscal year, uh, so we were sitting here about a year ago, obviously dealing with the initial um, onset of the pandemic, and so we conservatively budgeted revenues. Uh, that was based upon forecasts given to us um, by our third-party sales tax uh, advisors and uh, obviously uh, you know, just the unknowns of what was coming. Um, thankfully, uh, those percentages have also come in higher this year, uh, majority of that being because Measure E obviously captures those destination-based sales. So. As the pandemic set in, lots of people transitioned to online purchasing, uh, and so uh, Measure E was, um, was the benefactor for that. Um, so uh, I, both uh, Chief Gady and Chief Perkins are here this evening. They gave a report to the Measure E Oversight Committee last week, uh, and they recommended uh, acceptance of the Measure E plan. Uh, we have included uh, this evening um, some fund balance projections as well as projections both for revenues and expenditures for the coming year. Um, we do have a couple of brief presentations uh, that they would like to go over, and they've both told me they'll be brief. Uh, so I uh, sure do want to give you uh, a little overview of uh, their plan for the, uh, for the coming year. I'll take your time. We got, all, we got all night. Take your time. We have all night. 10.30. <laughs> do you need more snacks? Apparently, <laughs> we're all getting real cozy. Okay. We're all getting real cozy. Can you stand in front of that camera while we eat? Chief, are you awake? <laughs> no. I'm just getting going. How are you doing, Chief? I'm doing well, thank you. And uh, good evening to members of the council. So, um, have you come? Well, no, I got it. I'll just, yeah, sorry. I'm kind of a mouse user, but this works too. Um, okay, so in, in out of consideration for uh, the council's time and brevity, I, I will certainly answer any questions that you have, but I'm going to kind of gloss over our first couple of years. Um, our 1920 expenditures, I'm kind of flying through that. We, we made the bulk of our purchases in that fiscal year. Uh, just to get our equipment up to where it needed to be and then uh, moving on with personnel. Now we did add per personnel uh, up to this point, three police officer positions and one uh, police services technician position. It's the little things that get me. <laughs> so um, just to, as Alex mentioned, we, we did have a, a purposefully slow start to um, hiring and uh, some capital purchases just because, again, we were unsure of where uh, uh, funding through the pandemic would take us, but it seems to be doing okay. So we're playing a little bit of catch up for this fiscal year. Uh, we still have a little bit of equipment that is on back order and will be coming in hopefully before the end of the fiscal year. If not, we'll roll that over and, and take care of that in the next fiscal year. Uh, some of the things that uh, we've purchased, uh, some more vehicles, um, uh, which are in process of being painted and, and upfitted and equipped. Uh, some things I didn't get to. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I wanted some. Oops, back up to that. I uh, still haven't acquired some software, some tech that I really would like to get a hold of, but uh, a lot of that is through consumer um, displays at, at, at vendor shows for, uh, you know, Cal Chiefs, International Association of Chiefs of Police, and, of course, those weren't live. So, unfortunately, wasn't able to do some shopping. Uh, so I haven't... Uh, been able to purchase any of that software that we need for investigative tools, uh, personnel tracking, and some equipment tracking, but we'll hopefully get there over the next fiscal year. Um, we did get some training accomplished, uh, which has been very helpful. You know, we've had uh, a number of things up there, and a couple of things I do want to point out uh, for the council. We've had. Um, some of the training has been on de-escalation, uh, which has been helpful for the officers to experience that. And then um, uh, 
uh, duty to intervene training, uh, which uh, Medri has helped pay for as well. So next year, our spending plan is to add uh, five more police officer positions, three police officers, one police sergeant, one police lieutenant, and then uh, a little bit of equipment to um, equip those uh, new positions. And probably the biggest ticket item that I have is we, because we're growing in size, we're going to probably double from six years ago over the next couple of years, and we need to just repurpose some of our space. We have a lot of space, but it's not really designed for the numbers that we have. So some of the things that we're going to be doing um, are remodeling the police station. Uh, I want to um, put a put a wall down that hallway past that door uh, so that our training room is closed off and my officers coming and going don't interrupt other training that we have there because we have a lot of training. Uh, that room has, has been very valuable to Valley agencies, uh, both police and fire and other public agencies for training, probation, parole. So I want to wall it off about where that table is, uh, redo the kitchen, make that a little more user friendly, get rid of uh, some of the furniture and, and get some more cafeteria style furniture, something more practical that we have in there. Um, repurpose, not repurpose, I'm sorry, retile or, or get new flooring uh, where that tile is currently. Um, there's our evidence room. That's probably one of the major things also that we have to redo uh, because we, you know, more cops mean more work. More work means more property and evidence that we collect. And so that is very nice office, you know, grade cabinet work, but it's not really property and evidence grade cabinet work, so um, I'm going to take that out, repurpose that space, I'm sorry, re, keep saying repurpose, expand that space, pretty much you double it, uh, get some uh, industrial grade uh, cabinets in there for evidence and also locker rooms. Um, here's, you know, it's a former gym, so we had some gym lockers in there. I want to make some uh, uh, space available for uh, regular size lockers so that we have uh, you know the appropriate amount of space for the employees and again I know it's real fast uh, but that pretty much concludes my presentation I'm happy to answer any of your questions thank you right. thank you for your help tonight too and thank you yeah. for waiting mm -hmm. both of you. oh certainly <laughs> our time is uh, your time <laughs> Good evening, Madam Mayor, uh, members of council. Thank you for your patience tonight. You did a fantastic job. Let me get this uh, here for you. Make sure this is the right one. No, that doesn't look like it. That does right there. I will be brief, I promise. <laughs> Much like Chief Gadian, we'll uh, swing through the uh, initial pieces that we uh, kind of already talked about. Um, I don't think I need to reiterate the things we've already spent money on them. One, one of the things we did spend money on initially is this fire engine that sits at the front of it. That was the largest uh, single thing that you've done so far for the fire department. Uh, it was almost a $700,000 investment. Much needed, um, but we're going to need a little bit more. Um, and that's what I'm here to talk about. So we'll breeze through this very quickly. The projects that we did in 2021 and then projects we are planning on doing 21, 22. And again, maybe this is something that we could table for another time. I know this was at the request of uh, Mayor North, what the five-year plan basically was, a strategic allocation of funds. What were we gonna spend it on? Don't tell me what you're gonna spend it on just this year. Give me an outlook, essentially, and bring that to council. So I can table that for another night, um, but I guess this is specifically more about Major E and what we're gonna do this next fiscal year. So I'll leave it to you to ask questions, and if you want more information, I'll gladly give that to you. Okay. Um, 
<clears throat> this is basically what we did in 2021, three positions. Uh, we did maintain those. Again, our fire calls are increasing. The last uh, statistics that we did for 2020, there's 569 fire response calls. That doesn't mean there's a fire 569 times, but all calls that aren't EMS calls fall into that area. So specifically, there's 569 of those. We had a peak hour staffing pilot program, and that peak, an peak staffing ambulance ran 507 calls as a part-time unit. So there's a significant number of calls that were uh, captured because of that part-time support personnel. We did add one full-time administrative assistant as part of that budget. So some of the budget monies fell into paying that person's salary toward the end of this fiscal year. Uh, we were also using one part-time permanent person who was already on staff to do the work that had not been done in fire prevention for over 10 years. Uh, this depicts basically the pallet yard in its initial state. Um, we're still struggling with getting that done and gaining compliance. But without that particular person's efforts, um, a significant number of staff hours were utilized just to get that moving. In addition to that, we also activated part-time personnel for the COVID clinic since 3.30. 3 At that point, we had only done 2,000, and now as of today, it was 2,440. Actually, 2,444. PPE, we uh, did get some additional sets of PPE, uh, more additional wildland PPE that was sorely needed. And really these are just depictions of the actual PPE, our people in the PPE that was purchased in it, not some stock photo somewhere else. However, that boot was a stock photo and that's what you did <laughs> get. Like yeah, that, that one was a stock photo. <laughs> it's hard to put somebody's foot up and take a picture of it. Okay, uh, what we did also do, we, we were expanding the programs within the fire department to better serve the needs of the community. And as your fire chief, that's one of the things I do is I do risk assessments upon what are the type of calls that we're experiencing. One of the things is we're coming into the uh, summer season where all of our canals and all of the river will be live. One of the things we found in the last few years is our people were not protected. Our paramedics were required to go out to boats on the river without per, uh, personal protective devices. Uh, not a good situation to be in, so that's why we've opted to do these particular types of things. It's also allowed us to kind of expand where we're going with our rescue ambulances. We also bought additional uh, handheld radios, much like the one I had here tonight. We bought eight additional ones of those, so each year we buy additional equipment to replace aging equipment that hadn't been touched in almost 20 years. So a significant amount of equipment. Three, appar app uh, three apparatus received Panatonic, Panasonic Tough Books. I'll slow down a little bit. <laughs> and we updated the swivel base mounting brackets on it so they're more user friendly. We also added this GTAC um, Tough Book piece that replaced all of our iPads. So it allows the paramedics to be a lot more efficient and effective, decreasing the amount of time it takes for them to get all the paramedic information that they need to transfer, also to get patient billing information. So it makes it a lot more efficient operation. Upgraded all the air cards. So that was part of the initial upgrade of all the radio equipment that we've been purchasing in a phased in approach. Uh, a lot of additional rescue equipment, which allowed us to do some specific things we'll talk about. These particular monitors are all of those things, including this other one, which is really geared toward firefighter safety and wellness, but also can be used on members of the public. It's a very highly specialized piece of equipment. The one on the right basically shows that you have a particular amount of carbon monoxide in your blood. Rescue equipment, again, multi-system or multi-discipline. On this particular thing, I just wanted to represent this particular th piece. We waited for this one for quite a long time. We were the first people to get this on the West Coast. So we had people from all over the country come take pictures of how we were using it. Uh, we got additional equipment here that was all, again, part of a combination between major e-monies and Kingsburg County Healthcare District monies. What it did is it enabled us, uh, upon getting all that equipment and being ready to use it, we actually performed a confined space rescue a week to the day of putting it in service. If you can't, if you can kind of take a look at there's a man hanging from the rope underneath that, he was extricated from that tank, which was a confined space. So we were actually able to use the stuff almost immediately. Uh, training, we spent, sent five people to an innumerable courses to increase their level of training. 
You see all that here. It's confined space rescue, rope rescue, um, trench rescue. We put on some confined space classes utilizing all that equipment so that it's not just sitting in a box looking pretty. We're actually utilizing it and making it so that all of the people within Kingsburg are much safer. Put on additional courses, did major repairs of equipment. This is all the things that we did again this last year. Additional things at Station 1, repaired the fire alarm, air conditioning units, replacement of roll-up doors, monitor motors, and rekeying of all the doors with staffing changes. Now, what are we going to do this year in this next fiscal year? For personnel, we're going to maintain four positions, three firefighter paramedics, for about $380,000. That's what their total cost is. One full-time fire department uh, assistant, administrative assistant, this is Rolinda Hernandez. She was added uh, March 1st of this year. It's been uh, proven her worth from day one. Uh, so it enables me to get in front of you to be a lot more effective, getting a lot of our statistics and getting our finances along with all of our billing squared away. She's already found a number of places where we're losing monies that we probably didn't even realize. Um, it, for her, it's about $80,000 all encumbered. So these are all encumbered costs including uh, the entire salary. We also kept hang on to the part-time non-safety paramedic program. We maintained three of those total positions in this budget. Again, these are part-time positions paid per hour, and it's about a co at a cost of $40,000. Now, this does come with a caveat. Uh, the hospital district and you both, you had okayed half of the m budget monies for three sorry, six full-time positions. We're still awaiting news from the hospital district on whether or not they will do their part of that. So in case that doesn't happen, this is staying in play, and we wanted to let you know what that general cost would be. So that's the budget projection we've done. So we don't know where we would go from there. The rollout of that would, if we got the positions from the hospital district, this $40,000 would essentially stay in that budget line item. We'd be utilize it for all the things we already talked about, which is over time for the person who's doing all of the work for fire prevention, as well as other overtime pieces that weren't allotted and allocated in that budget. Radios is another, again, uh, piece that we're still working on every single year. Update six unit radios for three response units. So we already did half of the units. That's all of our ambulances. Now it's all the engines and the truck and staff vehicles. So now they all have matched radio sets rather than multiple different radios. So that's a very difficult thing to deal with when you work from unit to unit. Replace three mobile data terminals. Again, same thing, upgrading and updating all of them so they're all standardized. These are also the exact same radios that are in all of our uh, law enforcement vehicles. So we're mirroring law enforcement so we're a seamless public safety group. We're able to talk to each other and have uh, cross communications. Place six handheld dual band radios. That's another one that we'll uh, talk about because the dual band radios we have now are 20 years old. And again, that's with a $35,000 cost. Additional personal protective equipment. This is to get firefighters a second set of their full PPE. This allows us to have quicker turnaround times after fires. Uh, right now, we have firefighters that basically would have to search for other gear that may not fit them properly in our extra gear that's almost timed out. So if we don't do this, then we won't have the ability to get them up and running after a fire because it takes about three and a half hours to wash and dry a full set of, of their gear once it's been contaminated. That's at a cost of about $40,000. Then we need to replace, as affectionately known as the mom van, officially. We need to uh, take it out of emergency service and put it into just utility service. This is a, basically a picture of the odometer so that there is some kind of accountability that, yes, it truly does have 213,000 miles on it. Um, it's, been, it's served us very well. But, again, we do need to make sure that we have um, another vehicle that's capable of long-term usage. And we would do that with an additional $140,000. It would be a duplicate of the vehicle that we have now, but best basically from the cab back would look different. would have a utility box on it and function as the safety officer's vehicle once we had that person up and running. 
facilities repairs, uh, fire station two fire alarm that's in dire need of repair so we can actually start staffing that station full time rather than just part time. Currently there is no working fire alarm. We're using basic stock smoke detectors and in that type of building we have to have an integrated fire alarm with people sleeping there in, in a form of business. It's about $18,000 to do that and the exit signs. We'd also update the city emergency response plan and we would pay for basically one third of that out of our budget. Total cost between us, PD, I think Public Works was added into that, would be about $22,500. And that's something we have to hire a consultant to do. This was last done in November of 2010. So this also makes us non-compliant and uh, puts FEMA uh, budget monies that could come back in jeopardy if we don't do this. Uh, training is additional one. We would do additional training on off-road driving. As anything, that's one of our biggest ones. We want to make sure we're training our drivers all the time. Firefighter 2, it's the next level up from initial entry-level firefighters so that they're a lot more competent. It also fleshes out their skills that they're able to do. Uh, we offer, we're, going to, we're going to offer four course tracks in company officer, chief officer, fire marshal, and that's all going to cost about $9,000, mostly with internal people and also uh, horse trading between my instructor abilities, bringing people in and kind of controlling the budget. We're able to offer a tremendous number of courses here, which bring more revenue to the city because people are here, they see the city, and they spend more money. And that's what I have in conclusion for this year's budget. Are there any questions I can help you uh, answer? Only that I think that what we got in our council packet is different than yeah. what you had here. So. Maybe if we could get a copy of that email. Absolutely. Thanks. Yes, Abby will have this one. Okay. Any additional questions? Always lay out a very clear picture. Okay. With the stock picture, too. So, <laughs> appreciate it. Just one quick question. Sure. You showed the pallet yard. Uh, how long do they have to get in compliance? I know it's been a while. <laughs> so, his, the last portion, he has his final 90 days started about 35 days ago okay to either become compliant or it will basically go to um a hearing okay. to decide whether or not he's going to keep doing business or we're going to basically levy additional significant fines so those are we're right on the cusp of that but he is he is making some progress but i think there's a a few hard feelings there, but we've been consistent and uniform and we've documented everything. So it's all we can do. Thank you. And we find them and they've paid it. Yes. They paid it now. Yes. Any other questions? No, right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 6.3 crime statistics report for the month of April, 2021. And Police Department update presentation by Police Chief Neil Davian. We're good. <laughs> Next time. Couple of quick. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Done. Check please. Uh, a couple, of, just a couple of quick points. We um, we we did some hiring. Uh, three police officers started this week. One was a general fund uh, vacancy, one was a measure E vacancy, and then uh, get, getting a little bit ahead of uh, hiring coming uh, next fiscal year, uh, the opportunity to hire somebody um, early on from that. So try, again, just trying to law enforcement recruiting and, uh, and hiring is really, really difficult. So getting a little bit ahead where we can on that, um, crime-wise, we are addressing a tagging problem that we're seeing around town. Uh, it's really ramped up in about the last three weeks. So we're addressing that. Public Works has been a great help. Their people have been on it. Uh, the Sheriff's Office um, has a, a graffiti abatement team, and they've also helped out. Uh, they were really good about coming out um, within two days and, and abating some graffiti that we had right behind the police department. So uh, very thankful to uh, our partners from Public Works and the Sheriff's Office for doing that. 
So we're, we be also will be moving to a continuous recruitment instead of holding recruitments in a list. We're just going to have a continuous recruitment because that's pretty much what everybody else is doing. We have to stay competitive with that. Our training plan remains on pace. And as uh, the pandemic slows and the economy opens, uh, more opportunities for training also uh, improve and increase. So looking forward to uh, catching up on some of the training that uh, we weren't able to get to over the last year. And that concludes my report. Happy to answer any questions. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, item 7.1. <coughs> Uh, Community Services Commission, we have not met yet. Um, 7.2, Public Safety Committee. We met Wednesday. Excuse me. Today's Wednesday. Today's Wednesday. <laughs> <I'm tired. laughs> Monday. We met Monday and uh, we got an update on uh, CPR and first aid training that the fire department is putting on. Um, Chief, what was the young man's name? Darius Rodriguez. Yeah, thank you. Darius Rodriguez um, is going to be putting those on, and he says they have very good equipment, you know, with funds for Measure E and mannequins and AEDs uh, that you're able to, I guess they're uh, like mock AEDs or something, you know, that you can use and learn how to apply AEDs, and um, it's open to anybody here in Kingsburg. You just got to get a hold of the fire department or Darius, email him or call the fire department. Uh, right now, I believe the cost is, it's like an eight hour class. It's, it's about 80 bucks, I think. $85. $85, and they're hoping that, that maybe it'll go down soon, you know, with start getting this program going a little bit better. Uh, and then we talked about the budget. We might, we're probably getting some funds from the city, and uh, we talked about potential things that we're going to be, we could be using those funds for for the for safety committee. And that was that was it. Thank you. Seven point three Chamber of Commerce. Uh, they met right before Swedish Festival. Uh, I did not attend it, but I spoke with them, and it was basically all Swedish Festival planning. And I think we were all there. I think it went very well. About it for the chamber. There was that one letter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Monkeys. Oh, the complaint letter. <coughs> yeah, but I think that was mostly. I didn't feel like that I was really Jeff directed did. towards the city at all. I think that was all directed right. towards. It was, and Jeff some, addressed it, and it was included in public comment mm -hmm. um, at the beginning of ours. So. I think that was mostly addressing some differences of who should and shouldn't have booths, which is pretty far out of our control. Okay, but Jeff did a good job trying to answer back to that too. Seven point four economic development. Seven point five finance committee. Uh, I believe that we are going to probably cancel our next meeting mm -hmm. uh, because we're basically just going to be here for the council <laughs> meeting instead. Uh, Seven point six planning commission was the same new night as pea soup and pancakes, so Thursday, and. Um, the public hearing was continued to the next meeting. 7.7, S SKGSA. We have not met yet. Um, I know I just got an email during this meeting to kind of plan the next one, so. 7.8, um, BID. So yes, they had a workshop this morning. Um, I believe it was at Park Coffee Park. 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 Park, yes. And so um, I talked to their <coughs> chair because I wasn't able to attend um, and what Leslie told me was that there are only a couple of people. Um, they brought up some concerns. Um, parking was one of them, and so Jolene was there to be able to kind of talk about how we can look at that. I know there's a study being done. <coughs> um, a couple businesses had some questions, but it was very small, um, and they will be presenting their budget in June, and their next meeting will be the first Wednesday of June. Um, so that is my report. Thank you. Uh, 7.9, Council of Governance. Um, I spoke today. Um, Adam had reached out to Moses at uh, Fresno County Rural Transit Authority about summer rec. 
Um, so I followed up with Moses today um, to make sure that they'll be able to provide transportation once again to the pool. And Moses said that they were in and were 100% in as supporting with us and partnering again this summer. So we're good to go and uh, looks forward to working with us again. And they're the ones that people want to know. They're the ones that also were helping us deliver meals to our seniors as well. So that uh, once again help us bring kiddos to the pool this summer. Thank you for helping to figure that out. Yeah, no problem. Um, 7.10 council member reports. Nothing. I just want to say thank you to the fire department for giving me an excellent first time ride along. Um, I posted some pictures and if you haven't seen them, I'm really proud of that ride along. I had so much fun and I just want to encourage y'all to take one because get in there, cook in their kitchen, council member Purcell. Cook in their kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a good cook. Um, I Pressure. told them that. But I had a lot of fun, and I think it was really cool from a council member perspective to be there on the call with them, to see how they go up the ladder, see how they do their work that they do. It really, you know, helps. I mean, as if I didn't appreciate the work that y'all do already, just a deeper appreciation. And um, I had a good time. I also had a lot of fun at the Swedish Festival. I think we all did. It's fun to be on the trolley, um, to see the community together again. <laughs> And, um, yeah, just good past couple weeks. Yeah, I have something. Um, May the 8th, I went to uh, a Freedom Festival at the Agri Center in Tulare. And they had some good speakers there. Uh, Ray Appleton was the master of ceremonies. The prayer was done by Sheriff Mike Boudreau. Um, then the welcome Congressman Devin Nunes was sponsoring it, and he spoke. Um, guest speakers were Congressman Andy Biggs, Mike Garcia, uh, Kevin Faulkner spoke there as former mayor of uh, San Diego. And they had a lot of other speakers, but one of the really good ones was Victor Davis Hanson. He had some really good things to say, you know, very knowledgeable things, and... Um, one of the things he talked about was, you know, for the USA is China. <laughs> he says we really need to look out for China. <laughs> and, you know, in years to come, you know, just he put a perspective on that. And also he talked about his concern with big tech <laughs> silencing our voices here in the USA. So certain people. So anyways, but it was very good, very interesting. And i um, glad that I went to that Freedom Festival. 7.11 city managers report uh, just the two items that are there a reminder that uh, our meeting our first meeting in June will be on Tuesday uh, June 1st at 6 p.m. not on that Wednesday uh, you guys approved uh, earlier when we when we uh, did the calendar and then uh, KYBA asked uh, to invite you all to the Monday June 7th uh, Hank Hashfield ribbon cutting ceremony at 7 p.m. That's all I have. Number eight, there are no future agenda items. So number nine, at, should we wait three minutes so it's 11 o'clock? <laughs> we are going to adjourn the regular Kingsburg City Council meeting. Should we wait a couple more minutes? So that no, it's exactly right. <laughs> we should wait a couple more minutes.